Thank you. As chairperson of this meeting, in comply I would like to announce in compliance with NJSA 10 column four, the Open Public Meetings Act notice of this duly and regularly scheduled meeting of the Jackson Township Planning Board has been published and posted in all appropriate locations. Roll call, please. Mr. Brassi? Here. Mr. Bernstein? Here. Mr. Fleming? Here. Mr. Herring? Here. Mr. Riker? Mr. Sullivan? Here. Mr. Marzo? Mr. Heller? Here. Mr. Wall? Dr. Campbell? Here. Mr. Herman? Here. Thank you. Um, we have uh, we have two resolutions for tonight. Mr. R, can I please ask you to read them into the record? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Resolution number 2023-03A, resolution of the Planning Board of the Township of Jackson, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, granting preliminary and final major cyclone approval with variance relief for a warehouse with office space for Progress Jackson LLC, Block 2401, Lot 6. Eligible to vote. Mr. Bernstein, Mr. Fleming, Mr. Riker, Mr. Marzo, Mr. Wall, Dr. Campbell, Mr. Herman. Thank you. Now, just please, for the record, uh, Mr. Wall is here. Just Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. May I please have a motion? Vote to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Mr. Bernstein? Yes. Mr. Fleming? Yes. Mr. Wall? Yes. Dr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Herman? Yes. Now, uh, for the second. Resolution number 2023-01B. Resolution of the Planning Board of the Township of Jackson, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, confirming the election of the of officers, the appointment of professionals, selection of personnel, the appointment of the Boards of Recording Secretary and setting the 2023 meeting dates. Eligible to vote, Mr. Brassi, Mr. Fleming, Mr. Herring, Mr. Riker, Mr. Sullivan, Mr. Heller, Mr. Wall, Dr. Campbell, Mr. Herman. Thank you, may I please have a motion? Second. Roll call please. Mr. Brassi, yes. Mr. Fleming, yes. Mr. Herring, yes. Mr. Heller, yes. Mr. Wall, Yes. Dr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Herman? Yes. That's all for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Now, may I please have a motion for the payment of voucher for the recording secretary for all in favor? Thank you. Now, I don't believe the minutes from the February 21st meet meeting is ready, so we'll push that off to the next meeting. Um, do we have any engineering or planning matters for tonight? Thank you. Any legal matters? Uh, nothing. Okay, so I think we're ready to get, you know, get right in there. So we have um, application. The first application for tonight is block 1701, lot 35, Boris Ironworks, Inc. Here. There. What do you like? Working? Yes. Yes, it's working. Okay. Okay. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Uh, I'm Mark Steinberg, an attorney from Neptune, New Jersey. I'm going to represent the applicant, Boris Bergelman, but it is Boris Ironworks, uh, which is a, an LLC, Inc. It's a corporation, um, and which requires uh, representation. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bergelman has been here before, um, but the application has not proceeded based on the fact that he needed an attorney. This is an application for a conditional use a home office. And we believe that we can meet all the requirements uh, for a home office or a home business in accordance with the requirements set forth in your planner's letter, yeah. <laughs> your planner's letter of December. So if we could have Mr. Bagelman sworn before, in. Before we have this sworn in, maybe let's, let's just hear from our professional. Absolutely. It's an introduction, so Mr. Yeah. Klee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. As uh, Mr. Steinberg indicated, it's an application, a conditional use approval application for a home occupation. Um, we don't really see too many of these um, applications, but it basically allows um, a homeowner to um, establish a home-based business in his, in his home. There are certain conditions that have to be met uh, for that to happen. Um, and in my um, uh, report, I highlight those or indicate those um, 
uh, conditions. So we should have the applicant review those conditions to make sure that um, he complies with or can comply with all of them. One of the um, uh, conditions or one of the um, requirements of conditional use is that he also obtains site plan approval. But based on the testimony that we hear, that could, could be waived depending on the extent of um, the, um, the home occupation. The only other thing or the comment I had, and I have received a comment from the um, uh, letter from the uh, zoning officer, and he wants to just want to make sure that any approval that might be granted, that the uh, building department or Mr. Vaporo has the opportunity to review the, um, the constructions that do that's done to make sure the firewall, um, fire rated wall has been installed properly. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Peters. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Our office has a report dated December 6th, 2022, uh, which mirrors Mr. Cleese in terms of compliance with the home occupation conditional use standards in our ordinance. I had an opportunity to speak with the applicant's attorney briefly this afternoon. Um, I, I think it's prudent for the board to hear the testimony of the applicant and go through the uh, board professional's comments. Um, and then the board can make a determination, um, A, if, if in fact they've met all of the standards um, so that relief can be granted, or if there are things that are outstanding, or if there are things that would lead them to cede jurisdiction from this board to the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Um, but there's no reason for the board's professionals to discuss those issues with you without any testimony from the applicant. So I think you let the applicant testify, we can go through the reports, and then we can figure out shortly where we are. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Witness? Uh, we have Mr. Bagelman sworn. Yep. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give before this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. State your name for the record. Or statement. And your address? 674 Heisen Road, Jackson, New Jersey, 0857. Affiliation and credentials. And uh, your affiliation with the uh, with the applicant? And the owner. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, the, Mr. Ray, the subject premises that we're talking about is your home at 674 Heisen Road. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. And uh, I'm referring maybe to the planner's report um, on page three. Um, two, two items of, of question is whether or not we comply with the current zoning ordinance. Um, it is my understanding that you purchased your home in 2020. Is that correct? Correct. And in order for a CO to be issued, the prior owners applied to the Zoning Board of Adjustment for a variance. Correct. And that was for a deficiency in the front yard setback? Correct. How did that happen? Was the house, to your knowledge, was the house built in compliance? Yes. And what happened to the road? Heisen Road was widened due to the weird curve there. And at some point, the township took away some of their property and gave them a variance because they took away some of their properties. Please, a little closer to the mic. Sorry. Uh, at some point, the road was widened and Heisen Road was curved and they made it more straight and they took away some of the front property of that home and they gave the previous owner variance due to that. Right. And, and there's a variance on file um, with the zoning officer that was granted to the prior owner so that the CO could be issued. For the sale to get completed, correct, yes. Right. And your house is how many stories above grade? Two stories. Does it exceed 25 feet in height at the high, the ridge point or however it's measured under the current ordinance? Does not. Right. And basically there's a walkout basement. Correct. Which doesn't uh, affect the height. Correct, because the okay. house swoops down in the back. Okay. Now, do you have any employees other than your family members? I have a family member that comes once in a while to help me. He lives in my house most of the time. He does stay at his girlfriend slash wife's house in Brooklyn when I do not need his help. Why don't you tell the board what you do? Uh, okay. I, I'm an iron fabricator. I make railings and metal furniture and metal oddities. And uh, um, do you have customers who come to the site? No, I usually install people's homes. So you fabricate and take out. Correct. All right. And uh, are you going? You're using your three car garage for this. Is that correct. correct. And you have any? Uh, it is uh, less than fifty percent of your living space. The garage area. Correct. And. Uh, you have a small shed also. Yes. And you obtain permits for that shed. Fully and you use that for some of the storage. Of correct. Your, Fully uh, permitted. Everything was. And approved. you use that for storage of your, yes. some of your materials. Yes. Yeah, extra tools or whatever. Yeah. 
And if you were permitted uh, the some use, you would have a, or do you have a sign you propose? There is a small sign, yes, in the grass. And is it less than 150 square feet? It is, yes. And um, is there any noise? emanating from this business very limited amount of noise and this is not a uh, when i think of welding i think of fire so i use an electric welder that does not produce a lot of spark it's not a gas operating machine it's a electric welding machine and does it produce any noise very little and you operate between what hours approximately from nine to four that's basically monday through friday monday through friday correct yes and um, how close to your knowledge is the neighbor nearest that garage probably three to four hundred feet away um are you making any changes to your house other than use of the garage is going to be any structural changes to the exterior or even the interior no sir now um one of the issues that we talked about you and i is is whether or not there's a fire hazard or anything caused by the use of the garage for this purpose and you have presented, and I don't know if the board has it though, because um, this came in on February 17th and I, it, I think it was sent to the zoning officer on Friday. Um, maybe we can offer this. This is basically a letter from uh, consulting engineers as to the fire rating uh, of the, uh, the slab, of the walls and of the door in the frame, um, which was satisfactory to the zoning officer. Correct, yes. So I think the board did receive it. Did not it did, did oh you have it yes thank okay you. all right because that was my concern before he came here is whether or not we can establish to you that this was not preventing any type of fire hazard uh, especially with these ratings as you see them and as well as the fact that the nearest um, home is uh, three to four hundred feet away um, you're planning on any more people living in your house no sir <laughs> okay and you just have one child correct and your wife all right and um is there ability to park for you and your wife and for your uncle when he stays in your driveway? Yes, more than plenty of space. And do you plan on any to work on or repair anything having to do with fireworks? No. All right. And this is the um, only home operation you propose at this site? Correct. I would respectfully submit that the applicant meets all the requirements of your ordinance um, for approval of a home use such as he does propose. Thank you. Before I open it up to the board, I'd like to ask our professionals to cross examine any pertinent questions. I'm just curious as to the location of the sign. I just want to make sure it's, you know, conforms with our ordinance as far as setback goes. Is where, where do you have the sign? It's not on grass, but I could move it any, any part. Um, could we get on the uh, survey map that you provided um, uh, the sign where it's located? Sure. Oh, just just the survey revised to show the map that I don't have doesn't show the sign. We will show the sign. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. And we'll, before we show it, we'll make sure it's compliant and we'll move it there too. Good, good idea. Mr. Bagelman, um, I've had several opportunities pass by your property. It seems to be a pretty busy site. Can you explain to the board and or the public um, there seem to be a number of vehicles on the property. Um, this looks as as a layperson drives by it to be more than two people working in the garage. Can so you help us understand that a little better, please. Sure. Uh, at some point, I did have a uh, few other vehicles there, but they have they've been since then removed. Uh, they just I I like cars, so I had about five of my own cars, and I have since then sold a few since. My wife said that the place looks like a mess. I need to clean it up. So I was going to ask that question next. Yes. Is it you or someone else that told you to get rid of the car? Yeah, my wife. So I had to get rid of my toy car and I had to get rid of my tow truck, which I did plan on using for the welding business, but it's been very, very difficult to obtain work because I'm limited on what I can do out of my truck. So I, I did sell that and I sold my other car. So now there's only three vehicles in my driveway. And other than that, there's a, a trailer with a barbecue on it. That's about it. Mr. Steinberg, uh, Mr. Klee and I were asked by Mr. Purpura, the zoning officer, um, that should the, to ask this question, should the board grant approval that an inspection needs to be conducted by the building department or the zoning office 
to confirm the fire rated wall has been installed. You have a problem with that? No, not at all. I, I have not installed anything. It, I just uh, had the architect come and take a look at what's existing. Nothing has been changed. At some point in time, someone from the town with the yeah, absolute, have no absolute responsibility for this needs to go out there and see. I have no well. problem at all. No absolutely. absolutely. So yeah. as opposed to doing it prior to this hearing, if the board acts positively, we want to make sure that we can get someone from the town to go out and confirm that so that the record is complete both for your protection as well as the town's protection. Yes, sir. I'm more than willing to help. Yes. Those are all the comments I, or questions I have for now, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Councillor. Thank you. The um, previous variance approval for the setback, uh, do you know when that was? It would be 2020 when you purchased the house. I believe it was done when I purchased the house, but it could have been done when the, the township purchased the property from the previous owner. Because as far as I understood, the story was when they removed some of his front yard, the township purchased it from him because it was his acreage, and then they get given him the variance at that point. And then when we went to close, they couldn't find the variance, so they actually went back to the town to get that to present it to my whoever was doing the deed and closing for the title for the title of the house. And that was a variance for the setback. Was that specifically for a home occupation use? No, it was because the garage, the way that my house is shaped, the garage sticks out towards the front of the yard, and basically that last garage does not meet the setback because when the street was moved and when they came to inspect, they said that there has to be. Uh, a request for a setback, and he said, "No, it's already been given because the township took away my land, and that's when he got the, the setback done." Okay. And then, and then a CO was issued. I wasn't yes. part of that proceedings, but he couldn't get the CO without that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Now, does the welding business, does the fire rating of the structure, is it any different than the fire rating of a single family home? Um, I'm not sure what a, what the fire rating would have to be, but. Um, I don't see it being any different. Like, let's say if I was welding in my own garage, it'd be the same as if I was welding for my business in my own garage. It's it's a stone floor, it's, it's cement block walls, you know, it's it's all the proper stuff that needs to be for where it should be for you to work on your car or do any type of repairs in your own garage. No, no, I understand. I'm saying, but is welding the same does it require the same fire rating as a single family home would require? Um we, we we believe so. That's why we. I don't went, see we why we need anything more. Yeah. Yeah. We we would have to be operating with a torch. It had to need something more, but I don't use a torch. Okay. Thank you. And would you agree to no outdoor storage, no outdoor work, no. You know, no, no, no. You know, everything happens within the confines of the garage. Yeah, it happens within the confines of the garage. Yes, I, I fabricate inside the garage. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Chairman. Sure, Mr. Herring. Sorry. Uh, shed was added last year. When when we revise when we revise the the survey as required to show where the sign is going to go, we will have the shed placed on that. We and we did get permits for the placement. Um, uh, yeah, on the back towards the left, I guess you'd consider it. Yeah. Like by the driveway, by the where you park your car. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bernstein. Um, I'm not exactly um yes, fluent in the welding business. Just walk me through what that material is used and how often you get a delivery, or is it something you pick up at Home Depot or Lowe's? Oh, sure. Um, usually I it's, it's a it's a roll of wire. I go pick it up at a supply house and I bring it back to the house, and that's it. Just just a spool of wire that burns when you put electricity to it. Melts. So it's not a, he's not getting delivery with a truck. No. I, I go pick it up. It's local here, 15 minutes away. And it's a small piece. He, he you, you showed me some of the uh, things that you make. He makes uh, railings and gates and things like that. So they require wires that become gates and doors and, and, and uh, fences. Breathy. Yeah, I have a question then. I understand the supplies you need for the welding, a small reel, and you bring it in and so forth. What about how do you get the iron pieces in? Do they get delivered by trucks or no, are you doing the, rails and stuff like that? Are they individual pieces or how do you get them delivered in? I'm such a small operation that I go pick it up my pickup truck here in Powell. I go pick up four pieces at a time. It's not like I need big, big deliveries. Dr. Campbell? I, I, 
travel by that uh, your property fairly frequently. It looks like you've had a business operating there for quite a while. Uh, yes, uh, the township, I don't know. They came by and they told me that's how I found out how to apply for this is they told me I have to apply. You could, you, you've been in business without proper permits for quite a while. How long? I've been building barbecue in my front yard for a while now. Yeah. It's been, 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 been a project I've been working on for a while. I, anything I do for a customer, I go to their home. So there has been no customers coming to my location. Basically I tinker in my garage and weld things and play with metal all day long. It's, I love to do it. It's what I love to do. That's why I don't want to stop doing it. And I also don't don't want to go somewhere else where I have to be taken away from seeing my daughter. I like taking my daughter off the, off the, the bus every morning, every night, and, and putting her on the bus in the morning. So that's why I'd like to work from my home so that I can keep playing and making beautiful things out of metal and still be able to see my daughter. Because the first six years of her life, I worked 60 hours a week and ran a business with 13 employees. I, after COVID, I closed that business and scaled down to one person. And uh, may I ask the professionals that this this is permitted in the zone? Thank you. Thank you. Fleming. I'm. I wasn't told that I will have to know. Well, and, and you know, the zoning the zoning officer just wants to be able to inspect and make sure that the the fire rating is satisfactory. And we've some we. Well, it's it's open to inspection, of course. Anybody else? Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> just to come full circle on Councilman Fleming's comment, I, I think since there haven't been any inspections and this was a subject of an enforcement, I, I think any and all permits that are necessary will be a catch-all phrase that would end up in the resolution. Thank you. Um, anybody else? I'd like to open it now to public comment. Would anyone like to speak on this application? Seeing no one come forward, I move to close the public comments. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Now, um, does anybody have anything to say before we uh, call for a vote? Any deliberations, just pro or against? Would anyone like to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion based on, uh, okay, you may have worked without a permit, not knowing it for a while, but he's come forward with everything. He's answered all the questions that comply with, and he's open to all future inspections. And uh, working along like that, I make a motion to approve. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Brassim? Yes. Mr. Bernstein? Yes. Mr. Fleming? Yes. Mr. Herring? Yes. Mr. Heller? Mr. Wall? Yes. Dr. Campbell? Based on uh, making sure we have all the, the resolution uh, recommending all the inspections. Yes. Mr. Herman. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't think I gave my representation to the board secretary. I'll drop you a, a line so you have my address and my email so we can look at the resolution. And when will, will that be available at the next meeting, usually? I'm sorry. I The resolution. Next meeting? Um, yes. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll try to get it as fast as possible. Thank you. Okay, the next one, I believe we have uh, Mr. Pfeffer on for two up, two large applications with a very small application in the middle. Uh, Adam, is it okay if I do that? Thank you. So uh, let me call up next block 19501, lot 29.05, Yarrick Jackson 46 LLC, approval amendment for cluster mailbox addition to previously approved Pine Rock, Pine Rock Walk. While you're getting set up, I'd like to open it up to our professionals. Mr. Klee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This application relates to a project that was previously approved, um, the Pine Walk um, or Pine Rock Walk at Jackson, a subdivision approval um, that um, is under, under construction, it's resolution compliant, but they um, ran into a problem with the uh, postmaster because the board um, uh, knows that um, the postmaster, um, I think probably throughout, maybe throughout the country, because it's a federal agency, um, no longer is um, providing um, in single home delivery, the requiring gang mailbox. This was approved before um, that requirement came in. Um, 
and um, they're required to provide these gang mailboxes. So they're here to um, indicate or to amend the prior approval to allow or to have these gang boxes installed. Okay. The subdivision, the roads, the houses, the grading, all was previously approved and under construction. Um, the focus then is just solely for these mailboxes, which I understand the location of which <clears throat> has been approved by the postmaster. Thank you, Mr. Peters. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the location of the cluster mailbox unit appears to be a permitted for accessory use in the zone, so they're correctly before our board. We just asked the applicant to explain how people are going to get to it. They expect it to walk, they're going to drive. There's sufficient on street parking for people to pull over and get the mail safely, um, those sorts of things. Thank you. Thank you. Take it away. Good evening, members uh, of the board. My name is Amy Kalak. I'm from Cullen and Dykeman. I represent the applicant, Eric Jackson, 46 LLC. Um, as just was mentioned, um, the applicant comes before you with a minor change to a final major subdivision approval that was previously issued. Uh, specifically, these, this change was necessitated by the United States Postal Service, um, and it's to switch out the individual mailboxes uh, per each residential unit with a cluster mailboxes. The United States um, Postal Service has approved the location, um, and it's on lot 29.05, and they've also prove, approved the number of cluster mailboxes. Um, and, um, you know, with that, I'll turn to our engineer just to provide some of the specifications um, with respect to the cluster mailboxes and uh, maybe show what they're going to, going to look like once they're installed. Thank you. And this is um, Matt uh, Bursch from Dynamic. Thank you. Hi, can you raise your right hand? Um, do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth in this matter before the board? And your name and address for the record? Matthew Bursch, P-E-R-S-C-H, North Dynamic Engineering, 1904 Main Street, Lake Belmont, New Jersey. Have you testified before this board before? I don't believe I have. Okay. Um, do you want to, yeah, would you give us some uh, information about your education experience? I'm a licensed professional engineer. Okay. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the state of New Jersey. I have a bachelor's of science in civil engineering from Rutgers University. I have over 11 years of experience in the field of land development. I've been accepted by uh, numerous planning and zoning boards throughout the state of New Jersey. Uh, and I've been working on this project for uh, over four years now. Thank you. We accept your credentials. Thank you. Okay, proceed. Um, so the exhibit uh, up on the, the screen uh, is actually our uh, mailbox exhibit that was submitted uh, to the board. Uh, it's last revised 12-15-2022. Uh, it's a one of one, and it was prepared by my office. So there's a, a couple different elements of the exhibit. Uh, in the top right corner, uh, it shows the overall uh, subdivision. Uh, it's a 48 lot subdivision, 46 uh, residential dwellings. Uh, in the, the bottom right corner uh, is the uh, a detail for the actual- uh, Sorry, let me just pause you a second. Um, the exhibit should be labeled A1? Sure, it was submitted. If it has to be labeled, we can label it. That's perfect. Just for the record, we we'll just have a clean record. Thank you. Okay. So I'll, I'll start over. Uh, in the top right corner is the uh, overall subdivision. Uh, in the bottom right corner is a, a detail for the cluster mailbox. Uh, and then on the left side is uh, what I would consider uh, an inset, uh, just showing where the actual cluster mailbox will be located. Um, so just to, to give a summary uh, that, just to reiterate what uh, Ms. Kalak already mentioned, uh, the project originally contemplated having mailboxes at each individual uh, residential dwelling. Uh, the postmaster uh, decided that they actually want cluster mailboxes rather than individual mailboxes. Um, we obtained their specifications and we uh, prepared this plan and located these cluster mailboxes in the, the best location that uh, we felt uh, suited this development. And the location uh, is, along what's considered to be road B. 
uh, or accurate way. Um, in that location is the, the stormwater management facility is located on lot 29.05. Uh, to, I'll try to uh, get as precise as possible, but uh, the mailbox is located uh, in this general location um, on the, the south side of the roadway. Uh, and then looking at the, the blow up of the area, again, I apologize, it's tiny, but um, really the, the overall impact of the cluster mailboxes is, is pretty uh, de minimis. Um, so the cluster maybe mailbox. I'm sorry, Anthony, maybe can you zoom in on that? That area where the mailbox is? So everyone in the crowd can see. Thank you. Yeah. That's, that's fine. Um, so the cluster mailboxes are located in this general location. Uh, these are the stormwater management. Facilities. Microphone, please. A little bit closer. These are the stormwater management facilities also located on lot 29.05. Um, if we could just shift the screen over to the, the blow up of that area. Just over that way. Nope. If we could just... Uh, just pan over to the, the left side of that exhibit and zoom out a little bit. Um, if we could just pan down uh, the, the mailbox is just on the, the bottom side. You can see the 15.2 foot dimension. We need to see the bottom side of that. There we go. Sure, we could work with that. Um, so there's three cluster mailboxes. Each one is 18 inches deep, uh, 30.5 inches wide, and 62 inches tall. Uh, since there will be three, it'll total 91.5 inches wide, uh, which is 7.6 feet. Uh, these three cluster uh, mailbox units will be located on a concrete pad that's eight inches. Uh, the size of that pad will be 9.6 feet by 3.5 feet and fully encompasses the, the mailbox units themselves. Uh, the, the mailboxes will be located within an easement uh, on this property, a uh, lot or on this lot, lot 29.05, uh, as this lot will be dedicated to the township. Uh, however, I'd like to note that the stormwater management facilities on this lot, as well as the mailboxes themselves, uh, will be maintained by the HOA. And I'm realizing that this is actually Rev zero of our exhibit. There is a Rev one that was submitted to the board. Um, Rev one is shown on uh, on the board here, um, but I can quickly um, walk through this. So there is access to the roadway um, provided right in this general area. Uh, there's a, a system of uh, curb ramps and sidewalks that allow uh, for residents in the, the subdivision to uh, park their car along this curb line uh, and access the sidewalk and essentially access the mailboxes. Uh, again, we chose this location because there are no residential dwellings on this side of the road. Uh, it's just the stormwater basin. So there's adequate space for cars to park along the curb line and access the mailboxes. Uh, there's also a system of sidewalks throughout the entirety of the subdivision that would allow residents to, to walk to the mailboxes as well. This is also a, a good location for the mailboxes as there's a street light located directly adjacent to them. So it provides adequate lighting um, if somebody were to pick up their mail at night. Uh, we have submitted this to the, the USPS. They've agreed on the, the size, location, uh, and we have their approval. Um, so in summary, uh, that, that's our proposal. Um, that is the, the modification to the plan that uh, we did, we had to make uh, per our coordination with USPS. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Peters, Mr. Klee, anything? Anything from the board? Mr. Herrick. 
So this change was basically um, initiated by the government. They wanted to make a change and you and you had to go with it and that was it. Yes. Okay. Um, did they say why they didn't want them to go from house to house or was it mainly like any economic thing or whatever? I don't have the full background of their reasoning. They just, um, they requested this and said, this is the new direction that they're moving in. I, I don't have a, a full backstory. Okay. Yeah, the government moved in mysterious ways. You know? <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Peter. Uh, lot 2905, who owns that? Uh, it will be owned by the township. It will be owned or it is owned? Um, I'm, I don't know if that... Uh, dedication. I'm, I'm going to ask two attorneys to get together because standing, someone owns a lot. It's currently owned by the applicant. Okay. So the applicant's going to deed the easement back to itself prior to turning the stormwater management system over to the township. Right. I know that a deed of dedication has been prepared. Um, and also we've prepared an easement, which addresses the, you know, the operation. Okay. So it's a condition of the approval to get submitted to the board for review? Yes. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to open it now to public comment. If anyone would like to speak on the application, please, please come forward. All in favor? Okay. Would anyone like to deliberate on this application? Would anyone like to make a motion on the application? Roll call, please. Mr. Bressing? Yes. Mr. Bernstein? Yes. Mr. Fleming? Yes. Mr. Herring? Yes. Mr. Haller? Mr. Wall? Yes. Dr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Herman? Yes. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Dr. Campbell. Uh, we might consider um, our professionals noting this on their checklist for future uh, consideration. If it's going to be a thing, then let's make it a thing that we're checking off our list every time. Thank you. Thank you, thank very, you much. very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, moving along quick tonight. Um, next application, block 19403, lot four, GM Grotan LLC. Major subdivision to grade 40 residential lots, one affordable housing lot, one stormwater lot. And I would like to turn it over to our Mr. Klee to uh, get it started while session gets set up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the application um, indicated involving 49 single family um, uh, building lots, one lot for 10 affordable um, uh, multifamily units in three separate buildings and a stormwater management lot. I believe we had initial testimony um, back in November 7th, uh, 22, um, and they requested to be carried or it was application was carried to tonight to um, a more uh, specifically detail the layout of the affordables to we'll actually submit a formal site plan application for the affordables um, to provide architecturals for the um, the affordable um, dwelling units, also to address the location of the mailboxes. Um, and um, that was really it. Thank you, Mr. Peters. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so this is a continuation of the preliminary and final major subdivision application in the RG2 zone, where detached single family homes are permitted use on certain size lots along with now the preliminary and final site plan application for the affordable housing component. But previously it was just a lot with the affordable housing component on it. Now we have a site plan so we can figure out where the parking is, where the buffering is, where the, um, the dumpster is gonna go. Um, I am, in looking at it, I, I, I got back to something that was a subject of some, some discussion and litigation in, in years gone by. And that is the, for a project of almost 50 lots, um, why don't we have some form of either open space or recreation that 50 new families could utilize on the site? Um, as I grew up in this business, we used to call them tot lots. That might be a 
poor choice of words, but that, that's my choice of words. Um, and so we have sections of the ordinance to talk about open space and recreation. We understand there was some litigation with the municipality some years ago, uh, invalidating some portions of our ordinances, which nonetheless still remain on our on the books. Um, and so as I as I looked at the affordable portion of this, I I was wondering if there was the ability to somehow provide some sort of, and I'll use the phrase tot lot for open space recreation, somewhere in this 48 lot subdivision. Um, it would seem to me, given the, the street that it fronts on and the size of the lots, it sort of screams out for something for 48 families to use on the site itself. So, I had my say about the, the subdivision and compliance with RG2 at the November meeting. Um, after looking at the, the more detailed site plan that Mr. McFarland had submitted, I said, you know, let, let, let's, let's have a conversation about whether or not we can figure out a way to put something in 2023 on this plan, or at least have the conversation about whether or not it's prudent uh, in this day and age to accommodate for that on a, sub, on a pro project of this size and density. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Adam Pfeffer, attorney on behalf of the applicant. Um, first is on, on a quick technical item. Um, so while we've been here before, we presented the application, uh, since I know there are several new board members, uh, while the record will remain, um, I've asked Graham, uh, once we get him sworn in, to kind of still go back to the beginning at a little quicker pace, um, but to give the whole board um, the understanding of, of the whole application as there are some new members here, and this way we can not have the issue of everyone reviewing it. Well, the members did certify that they watched oh. the... That's fine. Thank too. You. That, that works. Um, well, additionally, the also, the, the the site plan for the affordable is a new application that everyone uh, is seeing at the same time. Um, so at, uh, as your professionals indicated, uh, we have addressed a lot of their questions and concerns that they that you guys have raised uh, at the last meeting. Um, as indicated, we have a, a you now a site plan for the affordable unit. Uh, we've gone back to the postal service and found out the location of where they would like uh, their mailboxes, and we've we've uh, placed that into the into the submissions. Um, I guess with that, we could jump right in. We have Mr. McFarland sworn in, and then we'll proceed. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give before this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yeah. State your name and address for the record. Uh, it's Graham McFarland, professional engineer, professional planner, certified municipal engineer with professional design services at 1245 Airport Road in Lakewood, New Jersey. I was previously qualified in this, this application and have testified before this board many times. Thank Very you. accepted. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can see Exhibit A7 we have up on the uh, up on the screen. Exhibit A7 is the revised development plan uh, that the board has in front of them that was uh, submitted in support of the application. As uh, Mr. Klee and Mr. Peters pointed out, uh, the primary subject of the uh, revision in the application was to provide a separate site plan application for the affordable housing. Uh, in accordance with that, uh, that component, we did redesign the, uh, the parking spaces, the arrangement of the parking spaces for the affordable housing component if the board recalls, originally we had driveways backing out into the, the main street. Uh, my client's original um, thought was to try to keep those uh, units similar to the single family homes, but the board uh, was not in favor of that, of that particular arrangement. So we, we did revise this arrangement. Uh, the application is still proposing 49 single family market rate units uh, in full conformance with zoning requirements. And there are 10 affordable housing units uh, proposed on, on a separate parcel located at the front of the site. Uh, there are a total of 21 parking spaces required and 21 provided for the affordable housing component of, of the plan. So that is in accordance with ordinance requirements. Uh, the unit breakdown of the affordables, we are proposing uh, eight two-bedroom units and two three-bedroom units, which is in accordance with the affordable housing uh, bedroom mix in accordance with the uh, with with the housing with the housing code. Uh, if we could go to uh, a eight next, Anthony. 
A8 is just a blow up of the site plan of the affordable housing component of the, of the application. You can see that there are a total of three buildings. Building number one, we identified on the left. Building number two in the middle. Building number three on the, on the right. Uh, building number one and three will each have four units. Building number two will be two units. All of the units are two-story units, uh, well in excess of minimum square foot requirements, living requirements for the affordable housing units and, and, and based upon the, uh, the bedroom mix. Uh, there was one refuse enclosure located uh, located for the affordable housing component of the project. And you can see it located uh, centrally located in the site to be accessible and usable to all of the units. And also proposed in a location that will that will allow easy pickup by a uh, by a, by a trash truck. The the design of the of the driveway is such that there's a two way ingress point located uh, across or in front of building number three, and then we provide a one way exit uh, at the at the uh, west edge of the of the property located uh, close to building number one. Mr. Ray will provide some additional testimony about particular. Uh, geometric concerns and 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 alignment of the of the driveway, but we're confident that that's going to work uh, work perfectly suitably. Uh, maybe go to a, a nine for us next. We'll just walk through them all. Exhibit A nine, you can see, is a landscaping plan for the affordable housing component. Uh, you can see that there is buffering required along the uh, the side property line, uh, which is now proposed. We did not have that uh, included in the plan. Originally, Mr. Peters did point out that buffering is required by the ordinance since the affordable housing component of the plan is not a single family home. So your ordinance does require buffering uh, when you have a, a, an application for something that's not single family that abuts residential zone. So we do incorporate that buffering in the plan in accordance with ordinance requirements. Uh, Mr. Peters also made a uh, one item he pointed out where he uh, suggested we may need, need a design waiver relates to uh, what we what we term the uh, the safety island. Uh, Anthony, if you can zoom in a little bit on the just the central part of the plan. What your uh, ordinance talks about is where where you have parking that's in a that's in a front yard in an application such as this. Your ordinance requires a a safety island 18 feet in width. Uh, the intent of that safety island is to provide separation between uh, the motoring public and between people who are parking uh, and using the, you know, what, what's essentially the private site. Uh, again, your ordinance requires 18 feet. This plan, we actually have 20 feet from the face of curb of the street to the face of curb uh, in the affordable housing lot. So I believe that particular design requirement is satisfied and the, the intent is certainly satisfied by providing a 20 foot wide uh, area that separates the public street and separates the um, the driveway and the parking stalls of the affordable housing component. So I believe that particular intent is satisfied. Uh, Anthony, you can just keep scroll through to, to the next exhibit, please. The next exhibit we have is a a ten, uh, and Anthony, maybe zoom in on on the right portion of the exhibit. Perfect. A little, a little hard to see from here, but it is included in the package the board has, and it is included in the, uh, in the full plan set. Uh, we prepared this exhibit for, uh, this is our proposed lot 18 located uh, on the perimeter of the site. You can see just left of it is, the, uh, is where the detention basin is. So we're in the, uh, in the bottom right-hand portion of the, uh, of the overall development. Uh, if the board recalls, we had a lot of discussion about lot 18 uh, at, the, at the initial hearing. Uh, lot 18 is encumbered by uh, freshwater wetlands buffer such that the, the building envelope is, uh, is slightly reduced compa compared to, I just wanna get to it in my drawing as well. The building envelope is slightly reduced compared to a lot which, which is not unencumbered. So what we wanted to do was wanted to show how that lot could be developed uh, similar to how the other lots in the project are gonna be developed. Uh, what size home could, could you know, in my opinion, nicely be accommodated and how that lot could, uh, could suitably, suitably be developed. So what this plan shows is this, this plan shows 
a, uh, a two-story frame dwelling with an overall footprint of about of 35 by 50, which would be 1,750 square feet of building footprint. Uh, we would anticipate, not, not committing to, but we would anticipate a two-car garage. So that would leave us 1,350 square feet of living space on the first floor, 400 square feet of garage. So 1,350 plus 400. The second floor, uh, we would an anticipate approximately 1,500 square feet of living uh, space could be provided. So that would give us a house with a total living area of about 2,850 square feet. Uh, certainly a, a sizable home, and I believe that would be representative of the type of homes that could be constructed in a, in a development such as this. Uh, you can see that the way we have the this home laid out, it, it uh, conforms to ordinance requirements for setback. And then that re this results in 20 feet from the from the back of the home to the wetlands buffer. And there is usable property on both, both sides and in the front yard of, of that subject lot. So we prepared that exhibit uh, for, for the purpose of showing that lot could be suitably developed in accordance with ordinance requirements. And Anthony, maybe I think that was A10, right? Anthony, go to uh, A11 for me. The next three drawings, uh, A11, A12, and A13 are the revised or updated architectural plans that were submitted uh, in support of the application. Uh, quite simply, this is, building, this is building number one. You can see building number one uh, contain, contains, uh, contains four units. You can see from the elevation that is a, a two-story structure. We did add storage areas to all of these uh, affordable housing units, which were not part of the original application. I know we've run into that on some other projects, and I believe we got some input uh, from that particular topic um, on this job as well. So, so each of these units do have, uh, do have some storage areas. Uh, on building number one, you can see there's a storage area on the left side and on the right side. So that would be split between you know, the, the two left-hand units and then split between the two right-hand units. So there would be some storage space for, for children's toys and, and uh, some bicycles and whatever the, uh, the residents may have. And I think just, uh, just flip through A12 and A13 for me real quick. A12, you can see, is the middle unit. That's a, uh, the middle building with two units, uh, similar elevation, similar architectural style, uh, just showing a two-unit building instead of a, a four-unit building, maintaining the two-story look. And uh, same thing, this building does have storage areas in the back of the units, uh, similar to building number one. And then, Anthony, just A13 real quick. And A13 is building number three on the our, on our right-hand side. Of the affordable housing component, you can see a, a, a presentation very similar to building number one and building number two. Uh, slightly different, uh, slightly different footprint because of the bedroom mix, but also there are storage areas uh, located in in this building for each of the each of the uh, four four units. Uh, this plan does does include, as as you just heard on a prior application, uh, it, it does include gang mailboxes which have been approved. Uh, by the postmaster, they they will be located in front of the detention basin uh, that that would be available for use with on street parking. Uh, so that plan was submitted to the to the post office and postmaster has been approved. So that that summarizes my initial presentation tonight. Thank you, Peter. Say anything. Right, I believe I'm uh, one design exception I'm, I um, neglected to mention was that exit driveway in its relation to um, the intersection with um, uh, uh, Grottown Road. 100 feet required and you have 40? Yes, uh, that, that's correct. And that is a, a exit only driveway. And I believe Mr. Ray will provide some additional testimony um, about the particular geometric requirements and, and how that's going to work suitably. Okay, thank you. And just uh, Anthony, if you can go back to A7 for me real quick, just one sure. other point I wanted to uh, wanted to discuss. That should be the overall development plan. Yes. Uh, if you could zoom in, I don't know if you can see the pointer, but if you can zoom in on the left-hand side here. I forgot to, uh, forgot to mention in my discussion that one of the other changes that we made to this, this uh, set was we did adjust these, these lot lines. We shifted these lot lines uh, about 30 feet to the right 
uh, because we did take a look at the particular needs for a site triangle. And you can see the, um, the site triangle as required by AASHTO shown on a plan here, which, which takes away uh, part of the usable portion of lot 27. So to offset that impact, we were able to adjust these lot lines and slide them again. It was about 30 feet to the right. So lot 27 will be slightly oversized, uh, but that would offset any impact of that lot created by that lot having to provide site triangle easement, which, uh, you know, to maintain adequate site visibility along Watertown Road. Thank you, Mr. I believe Mr. Peter has opened up a little speaking about the uh, tot lots or whatever you want to call them. Are you planning on, do you have any area for that? Um, yeah, sorry. So yeah, so we had some discussions um, since the last meeting with the applicant. Uh, I think the idea that we had come up with, I think that makes the most sense uh, from a zoning standpoint um, would be lot two, which is, uh, Anthony, if you just scroll just a little bit, um, it's the lot, no, I'm sorry, oh, I apologize. The lot right above, correct, right above the, um, the affordable housing, we would combine that lot into the affordable housing lot uh, and that would provide us with a place that we can put um, sufficient uh, swing set or whatever recreation um, is suitable, um, as well as we can look at it and see if we could add additional parking, because obviously the setback uh, for that first building. I'll right, and, and, and to build on that concept a little bit, Mr. Peters and I did talk about this uh, a couple of times between Friday and this afternoon, and, and I think independently, and I, and I believe collectively, both came to the same same conclusion and, and understanding of your ordinance requirements. Um, the, uh, as Mr. Pfeffer just, just indicated, I believe the, the best way to incorporate it on this particular project would be for uh, what's currently proposed as lot two adjacent to the affordable housing, for that lot to be eliminated, for the lot line between lot one and two to be eliminated, for that area of that currently proposed lot two, to be incorporated into the affordable housing plot, uh, then in my opinion, uh, any recreation component would simply be an accessory use within that, within that lot, uh, which is in accordance with ordinance requirements. Ordinance does allow accessory uses on, on a lot in which it you know, serves, the, uh, serves or is subordinate to the principal use. Mm -hmm. So I believe if, if the recreation component is situated on a lot that is already occupied by another principal use, I believe that would be permissible by your ordinance. The original concept that, that Mr. Peters and I discussed was possibly putting the recreation component on, uh, on its own lot, on an individual lot, but I don't believe your ordinance permits that because your, your ordinance has very specific limitations for uh, how parks or playgrounds would be permissible in this particular zone. Um, they would have to, they're defined as municipal parks, playgrounds, and your ordinance actually says it, it takes an action by the township committee to do that, which you know, we don't have a committee anymore. But um, so I, I don't believe a tot lot on a separate lot would uh, conform with your current, current language in your ordinance. However, as I was, was explaining, I do believe uh, providing it as an accessory use uh, on another lot that has a proposed principal use. I believe that's in accordance with ordinance requirements. So I believe that could be provided. Peter? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I would concur with Mr. McFarland's conclusions as it relates to the planning issues. Um, there was some concern if we try sort of parse out a separate lot that the permitted uses for the RG2 zone may out of absolutely no one's fault referenced municipal governing body action. In this case, this would be something the homeowners would have. So quite frankly, having it next to the affordable housing units is a good transition area. Um, it will allow for on-street parking in an area where there's already off-street parking for the affordable housing units. I think it's a superior layout. Um, and I want to commend the applicant for working with the board and the board's professionals to provide what I, I believe 
is a better plan for the residents that are going to be in this community. Thank you. Just a couple of questions. Who would be responsible to maintain that lot? The association. There's going to be an association anyway, so it would just that, fold into the association. That association would be responsible to maintain the affordable yes. housing as well. Thank you. And um, just want to make sure that people are not right. Residents of the single family homes are not going to take up the spots from the affordable housing. I'm assuming that there'll be signage or something that the affordable housing parking will be limited to occupants of the affordable housing units. We have no issue with adding signage. Thank you. I guess the board attorney, if she has any objections. Uh, uh, no objections. Would the would that recreation facility be available? I'm um, on. Would it be available to the other residents of the planned development? Yes. Also? Okay. That's all. Thank you. And the association documents would indicate that those are open space and area separate for separate correct entities. Okay. Any other comments from the board? I have Walker. a question. Sorry, Mr. At the in November seventh, there were some questions I think uh, from Mr. Fleming in regard to changing the angle of the house on Lot Twenty. Words to front of you. Is that done? I can't tell on this. Uh, yes, I believe Mr. Fleming was referring to. I think it's at Lot Twenty. Yeah, that's yeah, the, uh, that it's. This lot, we discussed changing the orientation of the home and the location of the driveway. If I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this plan doesn't reflect that yet, but we'll certainly agree to take care of that as a condition. Okay, and I got one other question that was brought up pretty repetitively on November seventh. Is uh, I know you talked about uh, uh, column is based on you know up to eight bedroom homes, and that whole conversation went on. Uh, and yet we still have no architects or what type of homes or footages are going to be on these lots. Um, so what are you going to do to provide that? Because right now we're voting on something in the blind for 47 homes, I guess. Right. So, so it has we indicated and testified at the last meeting. Uh, applications of this size obviously are a little bit different as um, developers still is not sure if they're going to be selling off individual lots or if they're going to be developing it with two or three uh, models. Uh, what we have provided to the board are, are obviously footprints that work on the, on the site. Um, and as far as uh, parking uh, calculations, we, we, we will comply with all both the township and the RSIS standards. So whatever the amount of uh, bedrooms there are four, five, six. We will make sure that there is sufficient parking, but they won't be getting at uh, the time of plot plan. Uh, they won't be able to get a zoning certificate. And I, and I also mentioned that I know you made some movement on lot 18, and you're giving them 20 foot, I think, in the backyard now. It's still not an awful lot with that wet line right there, right? Uh, so, they, sure. you know, they're not going to put in the ground pool in with 20 foot. They're not going to be able to do much with it. Still, you know, it's, it, it really changes the whole concept of that lot. Right. Maybe that could be a second top lot or something. So, uh, so again, so so as that house ain't going to do nothing with their backyard. So as uh, two things. So with regard to again the top lot, as, as Mr. McFarland has testified to, uh, we really the ordinance doesn't allow us to create a top lot. Uh, that would then kick us into the zoning board. Um, what Mr. McFarland though did do, and I believe it was on a. 10 um, was to show because again we had just some boxes he wanted he did a little zoom in and did show what size of the house uh, can be put there without any issue uh, both also we had further conversations with uh, the developer who indicated and I'll tell you that I have this conversation with clients a lot not everybody wants a pool uh, no, not no. every home I don't want one. I know so, that. Right. So, so some people are happy having I, just I open okay. space that they have. Would the applicant stipulate then that nothing bigger can go on that lot? I believe so. I will confirm with, with the applicant, but I don't think that's going to be an issue. As, again, as Graham indicated, uh, the box that's shown um, gives us the setbacks that we need. So, I, so if they were stipulated no bigger than that on that, right, on that one lot, yes. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yeah, if I might add on to that, Mr. McFarland had said he, he what was the, the usable rear yard now for that lot? Well, we, have, we have 20 feet from the back of the home to the wetlands buffer. So lot. I, I think that's probably something you could put in the ordinance because it was testified to in that. And then while it's normally disclosed at, at closing, we could also ask that they disclose it when they offered a lot for sale. Yeah, we used to do a lot of that. If you remember, for sort of like a, a, a lot like of restriction the noise or sales map. stuff like that with the bases and stuff, they had to declare it on their on their paperwork and everything right. else. Well, they're just 
one, two, there's only one lot that's really sort of negatively impacted. There's really only one, two, three, four, four or five lots that even have wetlands buffers on them. Right. So to the extent they disclose them at the point of sale, I think that could be at least. That is fine. We have no objections. Put the residents to on notice. It's too late. That probably not yes. Get brochures there. The you show that wet line as so the people know what they're getting. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Wall. Yes. A brief question for our, our professionals, just to reconcile the affordable housing count. Perhaps it's tied to the minimum lot area, but it shows on a a a count of eighteen, and then the applicant showing a count of ten. Is that tied to a different formula where it's not required to be 18? No, it's 10. I'm not sure where the 18 A8, is coming. It says on A8, affordable housing required 18 units from your chart, from your plan, and showing 10. So I'm trying to, from our, from our professionals, I'm not asking the applicant, from our professionals, can you uh, speak to that? So we have it clear why there are 10 affordable units, not 18 affordable units. I'd be happy to have Graham testify as to what the design is and how they make use of the Pinelands development credits. And then I'd be happy to follow up his testimony. Well, I mean, otherwise very, very, I'm going to testify for him. Yeah, because I just want to make sure we're not running counter to the state's guidance on providing affordable housing and shorting this development by eight units. No, the, the obligation for this development is, is 10 units, and that's what's proposed. Uh, I, I think may, maybe perhaps you're looking at the reduced scale and having a hard time reading between uh, the 10 and the 18, Mr. Wall, but um, there okay, are... So, Anthony, thank you. Anthony, can you put A8 up just to address whether or not I can see? <laughs> Go to the small print. As, as I testify, Where just... it says 18. As I had testified, um, there are two four-unit buildings and one two-unit, so that's ten. And uh, our chart shows uh, shows ten right, and ten. You. Hold on one second, please. See up there, where it says eighteen under required affordable housing, eighteen units required provided ten units. That's why. That's why the question is our professor. Oh, you speaking. are then, Mr. Wall. Mr. Wall, you are correct. That eighteen is a typo. Required is ten. On, on that, that uh, in the what you're referring to, and I now see it on the plan for the first time. You're referring to in the RG in the chart over here. It says 18, wherever, wherever the heck it is, right there. If you look real close, if you look real close, it says 18. <laughs> it says 18. You're correct. 10 is required. The requirement is 20 percent. So the 20 percent of 49 is 10. That's why I'm asking the question. Yep. Just want to make sure we're seeing things straight. Yeah, I apologize for that uh, inconsistency. Apology accepted. Fleming? On the part before the affordable, I know you have to accept that, but there's no way you're going to get that to the fall below to the south of the river. We have some uh, street trees to the extent that we can provide them because we are also um, have to satisfy the MUA's requirements to provide uh, set individual water and sewer services to each of the uh, to each of the units, but to the extent that we can that we can add shrubbery without impacting the water and sewer services, we'll agree to provide that in between the shade trees. Yes, we can we can uh, provide no no on street parking from lot twenty four to lot twenty seven. How about how about we agree to take a look at that 
and provide maybe provide something that's more slender that would not have that impact. Because I, I do like trying to get some street trees in there to give that, you know, boulevard. Now, I understand. I understand. It's all about it's all about balance between what we what we like to have. Um, I, 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 I would like to keep a couple of you know, taller trees in there. We can provide species that can be limbed up uh, with no impact to, to passing motorists or, or to cars. Yeah, well, yeah, yes, yes. Ms. Campbell? And um, Mr. Fleming, it might help if the, if the plantings in the center aisle were, would be a buffer for the headlights going from those homes. To the other side, so the lower well, might help. Yeah, to, to that point, we can add some shrubbery in those islands as well to further uh, offset the impact from those headlights. Great, thank you. Thank you. Else? Harry? Yeah, back in uh, September, um, the uh, tree specialist uh, issued their report, and just want to make sure that their recommendations are are actually being uh, worked on and um, become part of this. Yes, we received their report and we'll address their, uh, any of their comments. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions for Graham? If not, call Mr. Ray to address the few traffic uh, circulation issues. Here. You can criticize on my point. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give before this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Say your name and address for the record. John Ray, R-E-A. I'm a professional engineer with McDonough and Ray Associates, 1431 Lakewood Road, Manasquan, New Jersey. And can you just give us a little information about your credentials? Have you testified before this board before? I have, I'm a licensed professional engineer. My field of specialty is traffic engineering. Uh, I've got a total of 47, 48 years experience in the traffic engineering field. And I've testified before this board on numerous occasions in the past. Thank you. Credentials accepted. John, you heard the questions uh, before from the board. Yes. If you can just address those concerns. Uh, just following up on the redesign that uh, Graham has testified to and, and Mr. Peters and Graham have collaborated on and my office had a hand in it as well too. Anthony, if you could bring up, I think A8 is the blow up of the affordable. Uh, there it is. So what we've done here in order to eliminate the uh, situation where in the previous site plan, we had parking spaces that backed up into the roadway. Uh, we've eliminated that by creating a parking area that's accessed by two driveways. The driveway furthest away from the intersection is a two-way driveway, which will be lined up with a median opening in the boulevard to allow for two-way access into and out of the parking area. The exit driveway at the, let's say it's at the west end of the property is, uh, within 100 feet that's permitted. I don't know if we need a waiver or a variance for that, but it's it's totally in a suitable location because the only movement that will be permitted there will be a right turn exit out uh, because of the boulevard that's there. So there will be no interference with traffic entering the property from Broadtown Road. It's a pretty simple right turn exit out. That's the only movement that can be made. So it's uh, it's really not an issue from a traffic safety standpoint. 21 parking spaces are required based on the uh, bedroom mix for the 10 affordable apartments, 21 are provided. And I do believe that the redesign of the affordable uh, section of the site plan has been done properly and in conformance with uh, proper traffic engineering principles and standards. Thank you. Now, Thank you. Mr. Ray, if there were to be cars parked around the bends, on both sides of the street. Do you do you believe that school buses or fire trucks will have any issues traversing around those bends? 
Exactly where around the bends. I just want to make sure I understand. Sorry, so uh, all the curves in the road around the single family homes. There are one. Two, we have a, yeah, we have 30 foot wide streets, which are in accordance with RSIS and parking would be permitted on both sides of the street on a 30 foot wide street. And as Graham indicated before, parking will be restricted from lots 24 through 27 uh, adjacent to the boulevard because we have an 18 foot one way aisle in that location and we don't want cars to park there. We've agreed to restrict parking in that area. But for the balance of the, uh, the property, we have 30 foot wide streets, which according to RSIS will allow us to park on both sides of the street. Okay, now your experience shows the same. I've lived in a subdivision with 30 foot streets and quarter acre lots, you know, when I first moved down here and yeah, it, it, it works. It, it actually forces people to slow down a little bit, which is not a terrible thing. Thank you. Peter? You else have any questions? Use, use the, the microphone. microphone. Sorry. Yes. The exit for the affordable that's closest to Grow Town is there going to be a sign specifying right only exit? Uh, we can add that sign. Um, we could put a sign in the median that says right turn, you know, so it's no not left turn. Or, yeah, we, not we can add a sign anymore. there. And I would yep. think that after people live there for a while, they'll know that that's the only movement they can make. So we don't want to oversign things, but we can add one sign. Right. And on speaking of overriding signs, by the additional entrance exit to the same area, if someone wants to go further into the development there, uh, will we be able to do that? Yeah, they'd be able to uh, make a left turn out of the two-way driveway to access the rest of the uh, development if they had friends that were back in a, one of the single-family homes or they needed to pick somebody up, they could do that. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Herring. Here's a question. Um, well, it's actually two of them. How far is that um, boulevard from um, the main road? That was John Graw Town that empties out into a main road. How far is that from? Uh, from there? How, how far does the boulevard extend in from Graw Town? Is that? No, I mean, how far is it? Because you, Graw Town is a. Um, not your most major road there. You go up to like Highway 527 and everything is up further. Um, how far is that from a main road? But main road meaning like Whitesville Road or Veterans Highway? Yeah. Uh, we are just south of uh, the traffic. So, uh, if you know where the curve on Town Road is, you can see it on the plan. I don't want to estimate exactly what the distance is, but at either end of Town Road, you have a major county road. To the north, you've got East Veterans Highway at the signalized intersection. And to the south, you've got Whitesville Road. They're both major county roads. Uh, we're basically just about in the middle of those two. So we're a little, little bit south of uh, East Veterans Highway and a little bit west of Whitesville Road. So you're not going to have really a backup coming into your into there at all? Um, well, there are, when we did our traffic impact study for the project, uh, as you probably know, anybody that's been on the board for any length of time knows that my firm has done probably most, if not all of the traffic studies for the other projects in the area. We included all of that traffic in our traffic analysis. And uh, as I've testified to before, any roadway improvements that are required to the county roadway network will be the responsibility of the county. However, every uh, development application that we've worked on in the past 10, 15, 20 years, the Ocean County Planning Board has required a traffic impact fee from everybody, depending upon the size of the development and the traffic generation. And so this applicant will have to pay an impact fee and any improvements that might be required to the county roads uh, will be, you know, responsibility of the county, but with the traffic impact fees that they've collected from all of these developers. And lastly, at the very um, very top of this, um, of the plans I see in front of me, there's a road going off. Where does that go? Does that go to a, an adjacent uh, development? You, you mean uh, road A3 right in the middle of the project? Yeah, very, at the very top. Right, if, that, if you're talking about road A3, that's to a, uh, there's another development. Oh yes, there will be an uh, ultimate connection to an adjacent development. 
and it will be lined up with the street in that development. That's one of the other projects that I referred to. It's not emptying out into a main road. No, no. And, and there was uh, testimony at that, I believe, at the last hearing um, from Mr. McFarland. Thank you, Mr. Bessie. Mr. A, I, I guess I know the answer, but I just want to clarify it. And you've taken into consideration all other pre-approved applications that aren't built yet and so forth? Uh, I have, and there are 10 of them. I listed them in the in the traffic study, and we just pulled all the traffic data from those other studies, and we added it all in. I We're, just want to make it on the records, because I, I, yes, I yes, know we how have. should proceed. <laughs> Thank you. Um, at this point, I'd like to open it to the public. If anyone would like to speak on the application, please come forward. Yeah, I spoke before. Sorry, sorry. No. You just have to swear you win. Oh. Can you raise your right hand? Okay. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to the testimony you're about to give before this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Can you state your name and address for the record? Michael Brzezinski, 277 Grot Town Road, Jackson. Okay. Um, can, you, it, uh, can you spell your last name, please? B R A Z I N S K I. Thank you. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything I say is going to stop this. Okay. But I do have a couple questions. How wide is that entrance into the? Each side of the boulevard is 18 feet for one way traffic. So, and then it gets smaller. As it, is there going to be a sidewalk all along there? there? There are sidewalks on both sides of the street throughout the entire development. Yes. Okay. But then you said that the uh, roadway on Town is 30 feet wide, that there's, you're allowed to park on. The, inter the internal, no, not on Grotan. The internal roadways within the development itself are 30 feet wide, as far as the cartway is concerned, within a 50 foot right of way. And that is in accordance with the New Jersey residential site improvement standards. Is there going to be curves and sidewalks put in along Grotan Road? Or uh, Mr. McFarland is indicating yes. Okay, for how along the whole Grotan? Road's about two along miles. the whole Grotan Road frontage, along our site frontage, along Grotan Road. Yes, I didn't understand. Maybe could just take the mic just, and explain it. Just in front of our property. Yeah, just but it's not going to go down. Not all the way to Whitesville Road. No. Okay, just there. And there on that first map, could you go put the first map back up? Anthony, can you please zoom out? Okay. Thank you. Or go ahead. Yeah, there's that white, this white area. That's the uh, detention basin. Detention basin that holds the water from the from the project. I'm doing Graham's testimony here. What happens when that water, if it opens? Just please speak into the microphone. I got to punt that to Graham. Excuse me. I'm sorry, excuse me. Speak into the microphone. Yeah, the, the retention basin, is that water going to flow on those other properties, like my property and the other pieces of property? The the detention basin stormwater management facility will primarily exfiltrate water into, into, the, into the groundwater. It does have an overflow in the event that you had a, uh, you know, a, a significant event, um, but primarily it's going to just recharge the groundwater. Okay, that's basically the only questions I have. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I got a question, Mr. McFarland. Mr. McFarland, where would the overflow pipe or overflow flow to, to the wetlands? Yeah. Uh, yes, to the wetlands corridor on the uh, the southeast uh, southeast of the property. Thank you. Would it, anybody else have any comments? Right up. Uh, I'm vertically challenged, so, so I have to break you down. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give before this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Can you state your name and address for the record? Sure, it's Francesco Aldachino. I am 224 Grotown. Can you spell your name, please? Sure. B-A-L-D, like the top of my head, A-S-C-I-N-O. All right. Uh, I like levity. I'm sorry. Uh, the only question I have, and it's related to the traffic study. Uh, given that corner, having lived there for almost four years now, we have a lot of crazy people come down that road at very high rates of speed. So what are we going to do to protect the residents 
who come out, and the poor knuckleheads that don't choose to follow the speed limit. That's really a matter of enforcement uh, for the Jackson Township Police Department. Grotown is a Jackson Township road. The police I department has, I mean, really, it's it's a matter of police enforcement. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the speed limit on Grotown is 50, 50 miles an hour. No, it's not. 45? 40, 40. It might be 45, yeah. But to, to Mr. Ray and Mr. McFarland, you are going to provide widening and curbing along your frontage to delineate the edge of pavement. Yes. Thank you. That's all I really was more curious about than anything else. All right, thank, you thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else in the audience have any questions, comments on this application? Seeing no one for it, I'll make a motion to close public session. Second. All in favor? Any closing remarks? Yeah, if I can, just real quick. Um, I think the applicant uh, and the engineers and the whole team have put together uh, a nice application. Uh, and originally came in as a 51 lot subdivision, 49 single families, one affordable lot, uh, and one stormwater management lot. Um, we heard the board's concerns. We heard uh, the comments last time we came back, we revised it. Um, and now the application is for 50 lots, 48 single families, uh, one affordable and one um, stormwater. Uh, I think the the comments from the board uh, increased the application to, to make it an even better site, both with the uh, the added landscaping comments, uh, as well as removal of that one single family uh, for a, a open space uh, um, swing area for the kids. And with that, I would ask the board to vote favorably uh, as a, in approval. Thank you. Would anyone... Mr. Harry, please have deliberation. Owners Association? Uh, yes, there will be an association. Thank you. Director Campbell? Mr. Pepper, thank you for appreciating what this board does. Would be nice if these applications came in with those things that we usually do. We frequently ask the same considerations. And it would be nice, given our time, that we didn't have to spend two meetings doing what we could have done the first time. If these, if these things that we often ask for were considered in the first place, it would be nice So I, in the I, future. I understood, and, and we are just, just a little bit of a defense. I do agree with your comments. Um, some of the stuff that we fixed were things that were raised that really were not known to the developer. Uh, for example, like the mailboxes, um, the site plan issue with regard to the affordable was a new issue that the board has now decided that's going forward. They would like to see a separate site plan. So we hear you going forward. Yes, we we, we like better applications. We would love to have them heard in one meeting um, and not multiple. So yeah, we hear the comments and we, we will take it to heart. Thank you. Anyone like to uh, deliberate on the application before we go for a vote, just put something on the record? Okay, so I would just um, say very quickly, thank you for adding that tot lot. I think it's going to add a lot to the neighborhood. Thank you for coming in with a fully conforming application in the RG2 zone. And I'm sure it's Graham, it took a lot of work to put that together. So thank you. And um, you know, that being said, I'd like to ask if anyone would like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion based on the stipulations for three lots being the notice in all the literature, the movement of the uh, angle of the house on lot 20, the tot lot and the other movements they made that was recommended, uh, especially after listening to the seventh meeting, I think they've come a long way. I regret not having architectural, I understand you don't have to, but uh, I think they really moved a long way and showed working with the township to make it a better application. I make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call please. Um, just for the record, Mr. Bressy, Mr. Taylor, and Mr. Herman also watch the video in a minute, so they're eligible to vote. Thank you, Claire. Mr. Bressy? Yes. Mr. Bernstein? Yes. Mr. Fleming? Yes. Mr. Herring? Yes. Mr. Heller? Yes. Mr. Wall? Yes. Dr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Herman? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Now we're going to take a uh, five minute break before the next application. Thank you.
study, which should be reviewed with the board. Um, the project um, is compliant with the parking requirements of the ordinance. 56 spaces are, or 520 spaces are required, 546 are provided. And based on that, maybe there should be some discussion as far as green banking, the excess parking, um, uh, which is which is being provided. The applicant will be subject to the um, uh, review of the Ocean County Planning Board. We've reviewed the uh, grading and drainage and take no exceptions. We provided some technical revisions to the applicant's engineer. Um, the lighting, um, uh, we, re we reviewed and have no problems with it. We should have the testimony from the applicant regarding the landscaping that's um, being proposed. Um, there is a 35-foot uh, wide buffer that's uh, required uh, to the um, R1 residential zoning district to the rear. We note the buffer has been provided, but there's no screen plannings indicated. So some testimony in, um, re with regard to, to that. Um, testimony regarding the um, architectural um, uh, features that are proposed. Hopefully the board has some color, or the applicant has some colored renderings that the board can review. Um, the applicant should provide testimony regarding the solid waste storage and confirming that the provisions of section 244-208 relating to solid waste are, are uh, being met. Um, there's no signage that is indicated, so the applicant is advised that all future signage will be able to, will be required to comply with ordinance standards and the no phasing is um, proposed it's going to develop as a single construction project. Again, no variances are required. The only design exception is the curbs in the sidewalks, or I'm sorry, curbs being provided, but no sidewalks. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Peters. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have a report dated November 29th of 2022. Um, properties located in the HC zone, the highway commercial zone district. Um, the applicant's looking to develop the property in accordance with um, Ordinance Chapter 24457A10, which permits as a principal use contractor's office, showroom, garage, warehouse, and shop as permitted uses, provided, however, that all materials and equipment are stored within a completely enclosed building. We'd ask the applicant for some testimony to confirm that they're going to comply with that section of the ordinance. Um, as it relates to parking, um, I'd ask the applicant to take a few minutes to go through the breakdown of uses in the building, the office use, the warehouse use. I believe the parking requirements for this zone require you to include the number of vehicles used in connection with the business. Um, they're going to get to a number where they probably have more parking than they need. So as Mr. Lee had indicated, perhaps we should consider green banking them or, or, or at least looking at if a surplus is necessary. What I would ask for is some testimony verifying that the parking spaces that are proposed are within reasonable proximity to the units they're gonna serve. So having them all up front and having a building that's a thousand foot long doesn't help for the guy who's all the way at the end, so to speak. That's not the case, but I'd, I'd ask for them to at least reconcile that. The same with the uh, dumpster locations. If all the dumpsters are up front and the building's real long, there's not a dumpster in the back of the building, and we should probably add one. Um, lastly, as we talk about the buildings themselves, they appear to be um, subdividable. Um, there appear to be units as large as 40,000 square feet. We'd like to hear some testimony from the applicant to ensure that what's being proposed to be leased in these 40,000 square foot buildings would, in fact, follow ordinance section 244.57. A10 as it relates to the specific uses. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Adam Pfeffer, on behalf of the applicant. Uh, as your professionals have indicated, uh, the, the subject property is located in the HC Highway Commercial Zone. Uh, the site is approximately 36.9 acres, uh, and we are seeking four contractor office showroom garage warehouse buildings of approximately 493,000 square feet in total. Uh, I have Mr. Borden here who will address the technical questions regarding um, your professional's reports, as well as uh, Mr. Ray and an architect. So we have a few witnesses for you and we'll move it along. At this point, if we can swear in Mr. Borden. Can you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give before this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And your name and address for the record? Certainly. Ian Borden, President of Professional Design Services, Lakewood, New Jersey. 
professional planner in the state of New Jersey, practicing in the field for 40 years, graduate of Rutgers University, University, uh, test in front of this board and many other boards over the over the years. Thank you. Planning thank, credentials thank you. Are well, the your experts and in, in, in our attorney summarized the project very some uh, very properly. So <laughs> I'm going to have to repeat a few things that they've already said. But just for the record, uh, the property there uh, on the uh, the screen is we pre marked three exhibits. That's uh, a one, which is an aerial map of the the project. The property is demarked in yellow. Uh, you have uh, County Line Road. Uh, north is to the top of the page. You have County Line Road that runs generally left to right with the uh, Heisen Road, or I'm sorry, Freehold Road that runs uh, bottom left to top right. Um, as, as denoted, the site is 36.9 acres. It is located in the highway commercial zone. The property is along County Line Road or zone highway commercial. As noted by Mr. Klee, the rear of this line here is, is R1 uh, to here. And this portion to that property is owned AR, which is agricultural retention, which means that that property is a preserved uh, farm. The development rights have been acquired, uh, presumably by the County Natural Lands Trust. Uh, there are uh, freshwater wetlands uh, located within a tributary, the north branch of the Matitaconk runs along the opposite side of uh, County Line Road, but there's an unnamed tributary that runs uh, along the westernmost part of the, the property. Uh, there are a small area of freshwater wetlands, a finger basically where I have the marker on now. Uh, we have an LOI uh, we're seeking from the DEP uh, to verify those limits. There's also a riparian buffer associated with that tributary. Uh, and we are now proposing to develop one within either the riparian buffer, wetlands, or wetland buffers. So we are, we're not proposing any disturbance of uh, environmentally sensitive areas. The property is, is cleared. You can see the developed portion of the property is this portion, which, is, which has already been cleared of vegetation. So the property is an open field. Uh, and I know Mr. Clear had made proper reference to the fact that we had received an environmental commission letter requesting a wildlife study. I had responded to their office with a letter last week. Uh, in that submittal, I provided a copy of this aerial, uh, stating that as an open field in our area to be developed, there, there is no impact to any critical habitat of any threatened or endangered species. Uh, in my opinion, the only threatened species that would be out in this area would be barred owl, and barred owl requires mature trees. Uh, so it's, it's simply there are, are no wildlife uh, impacts uh, to the pro from the project. Uh, as noted, uh, we are proposing to construct, con construct contractor's office, showroom, garage, warehouse, and shops. We are seeking to comply with the uh, Use as listed in the highway commercial zone, which is 244-57A10. Uh, uh, as one of the conditions of that, we are not allowed, nor are we proposed to have any outside storage or materials or equipment. We are not proposing, nor are we permitted to have any manufacturing. Uh, company vehicles will be parked at the site overnight. We are proposing uh, that there be 26 tenants uh, there are four, as denoted, four one-story buildings. The total building area of those four buildings is 493,442 square feet. Uh, of that number, uh, for parking purposes, 452,179 square feet is considered a warehouse. Uh, and uh, 40,211 square feet would be office. The parking ratios obviously are calculated differently for those uses. Uh, and in addition, we're required to provide one parking space in addition to those totals for each of the 26 units. So when you do the math on all that, those uses and the numbers of tenants, we are required to provide 526 parking spaces and we are pro proposing uh, 546 uh, spaces. Um, 19 of those spaces are ADA accessible. Uh, we do show 14 on the plans. Uh, the planners review noted that we required five additional. We will provide those. We will provide EV ready parking spaces as required by Senate Bill S3223, which is 4% of the total or 22. So 22 spaces will be denoted as EV required. 
If you could go to the next exhibit, please, Anthony. Uh, this is the site plan uh, showing again the four buildings. Uh, County Line Road in this case uh, runs from top to bottom on the left side of the map. North is to the right. You can see the wetlands up on the top right. Uh, there are uh, loading zones uh, sporadically located. Those are basically the darker areas, the darker squares that you see. Uh, we did try and, and work to spatially distribute the parking around the buildings. Um, we believe that, that it functionally uh, does serve to do so. All of the parking for the project would be shared. There is no uh, dis defined spaces for any building or any tenant. So uh, we believe that uh, uh, proportionally the spaces are uh, located in a manner to satisfactorily service each of the uh, 26 uh, proposed uh, tenants. Uh, the project proposes 29.5% of building coverage, where we're permitted to have 30%, and 59.2% uh, uh, of impervious coverage, where we're permitted to have uh, 75%. Each of the buildings will comply with the maximum permitted building height of 35 feet. Uh, we have access to the building through, well, maybe you want to uh, zoom in, Anthony, if you don't mind, on the, the left side here. Uh, again, Mr. Rail gave testimony on the traffic, but, but County Line Road is a divided uh, two-lane highway, so we have two westbound lanes across our frontage. We have two driveway entrances to County Line Road. Each are right in or right out only. We have provided a truck circulation plan as part of the set, uh, set of sub site plans that shows that the, the site can be circulated at the driveways as well as, well as internally by emergency vehicles as well as uh, trucks, WB-50 trucks. Uh, the 35 foot buffer that's at the rear of the site, it was asked and we agreed to provide additional landscaping along that buffer. We do provide the dimensional buffer, but additional, the existing trees are a bit thin back there. So as requested by the uh, board engineer, we agree to provide that additional uh, evergreen screen plantings. Uh, in addition, we have a 10 foot wide landscape strip along the, the side property line and uh, landscaping as required in those areas as required by the ordinance as well. Uh, those are uh, uh, trees and shrubs uh, planted at, uh, at, uh, in spacings required by the, uh, by the ordinance. Uh, a, grand sign, a ground sign will be proposed, but it will comply in all respects with the ordinance. The ordinance requirements have a maximum height of six feet, maximum area of 30 square feet, and a set back at 25 uh, feet with the base of the sign being landscaped. Uh, the, the signage would denote the, the facility name, whatever that name is. There, there's no name identified yet. The sign would not contain a panel for every one of the 26 tenants. As you can imagine, there's just not enough room in a sign of that size, but each tenant will have a separate wall sign on their unit uh, to denote their name of their business and address. And, and those wall signs would comply with the ordinance requirements as well. Uh, we are proposing water and sewer. There is currently water and public water and sewer located within County Line Road along the site frontage. Uh, they were actually extended by the previous owner of the property uh, to, to allow this property. This, this, this property has been intended to to be developed for many years. So we are gonna simply connect the uh, gravity sewer and water uh, to, those, uh, uh, to those existing facilities. We have submitted the plan for review to the Fire Prevention Bureau. They have approved it with the request to add a single hydrant, which we have done. We have proposed a number of hydrants, hydrants as is common with the review with those offices because they're the experts. They always uh, normally will ask us to add additional hydrants or relocate some. And in this case, they asked us for one additional, which, which we've provided. Uh, the refuse enclosures, it was noted in the planning review that, that some refuse enclosures require to walk from, from uh, one or more of the buildings. 
and we will relocate or add additional refuse enclosures as uh, recommended by the board planner. Uh, all the refuse enclosures will be landscaped, uh, will be constructed in accordance with the requirements with the six foot solid uh, enclosure with landscaping. Uh, and, and we otherwise agree to comply with all other conditions and comments of the board planners and engineers letters. Uh, and the one waiver that we do request as noted by the board engineer is a sidewalk along County Line Road. Uh, we are proposing curb as part of the county road improvements. We are widening the road in accordance with the uh, county planning board requirements. Um, and uh, we, we have asked for the waiver of the sidewalk. Of course, that's at the discretion of the board. Should the waiver be granted, the payment would, would be made to the pedestrian safety fund in lieu of constructing the sidewalk. And Mr. Borden, and, um, a review of the site, is, are there sidewalks on either side of the property at this point? There are not. The the property to our uh, east is the Clayton uh, Garden Center or a uh, center which is vacant, and to our to our uh, west is is wetlands, and then on the other side of that, at the corner of Heisen Road, is undeveloped uh, highway commercial property. So, and we've we've done uh, developments on the opposite side of high, highway commercial on the opposite side of the road in the highway commercial zone. And I believe the waivers are granted for those sidewalks as well. But we'll be guided by the board. If you want to see us build it, we'll build it. If not, we'll waive it and pay the fee. Uh, I think I also I want to make sure I, I, I think I said this, but we're obviously we'll comply with all of the technical requirements of the board planners and engineers review letters. I should maybe just quickly go to A3. We just have one more exhibit, which shows the uh, kind of a, a, a perspective of the buildings. This is just one of the internal views. You see the buildings on the right kind of gives the view of the texture and color of the cars park. And then on the left, you can see those, those dark squares I, I noted on the site plan where the loading areas are, where they're notched into the buildings with obviously the access aisle. So that just, shows what the buildings would look like. I thought an interior perspective in this case would be more helpful because it, it shows both the, the, the front of the buildings as well as the, the rear of the buildings where the load, the, the, the uh, employee parking as well as the, the loading. And that's basically all I have. Of our professionals have anything to ask? Um, um, just a couple of things, Mr. Chairman. All relating to um, Building A, um, specifically the, the I'll say the back of it that faces North County Line Road. Um, I'm just wondering, um, curb appeal, you know, aesthetics. I think we could probably do a little bit better than just one solid wall. Um, the only landscaping I see is the required street trees. Um, I think there's doors that exit to the rear. Um, two county, or not two county line, but facing county line road. And if it would be appropriate to have a sidewalk along the back of that building, but most of them concerned or think that you know we could enhance the landscaping, enhance the architecturals, to give it a little more curb appeal from North County Line Road. I think that's a good point, Doug. It'll have the same colors that I showed on that that A three, but as far as landscaping goes, uh, we will certainly add some uh, evergreen trees and some shrubs along that area as well. Um, We'll soften that from view from the road. Um, Burmine, perhaps? If I can fit it. I don't know that I could fit it. Or, uh, but if if I can, I'd be certainly happy to. Okay. A major concern was just like I said, the aesthetics, the curb of um, People are traveling on North County Line Road. They're going to look over and just see the wall. That's all. Thank you. Peters? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Borden, you had indicated that the uses will be asked per 244.57A10. Um, I appreciate getting that testimony. There was something in the statement of operations that there was maintenance of equipment taking place within the building. Can you tell us what that is? And is there something that should be, should there be any further discussion about, you know, are we going to take engines apart inside? Um, you know, is there main, when we talk about maintenance of vehicles, we, you said it wasn't going to be manufacturing. But I just. Well, I was speaking uh, because the uh, that's speaking to the use that permits. 
contractor office showroom garage warehouse and shop so that's mm -hmm. speaking to the garage and the shop aspect of the use and what what my understanding of that would be would be a contractor if they wanted to maintain their own vehicles uh possibly change the oil uh light repairs uh, might be uh, uh just light maintenance I would, I would call that certainly it's not uh the business of performing odor repair uh that that's not you know that's not what we're proposing thank you what what's the largest unit size that's proposed that you said we're going to have 26 uh I, I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. I thought I heard you say before 40,000 square feet, or I, I, I'm not yeah, even sure of that. I think that's what's shown on the site plan. Okay. I just wanted to um, make sure because we, we have tractor trailer loading, we have a 40,000 square foot unit, and we want to make sure that, that this doesn't turn into a warehouse facility. This is supposed to be contractor's use. So. I understand. Yep, and that's why you don't see here what you normally see as part of warehousing. Normally, with 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 a pure warehousing use, you see buildings that are much wider. Uh, these buildings are quite a bit more narrow than a true warehouse use, and plus, you don't see the bank of of loading. You see very limited loading docks. Agreed. Thank you for that testimony. Um, with regard to the dumpsters, um, well, I I heard you say that you'll comply with the the board professionals report. We're going to put some dumpsters at the far end of the building as well. Yes. Thank you. That's all I have for. Mr. Borden, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. So, I mean, typically what, you know, the first thing that comes to mind when I think of a contractor warehouse, I usually think of these 1,500 to 2,000 square foot condos, roll-up doors, you know, kind of small facilities. Um, you know, this is obviously something, you know, obviously you have something different in mind. I just wanted to go through a, a few uses and try to figure out what this is and what this is not. So number one is I believe you already stated on the record that it will not be any manufacturing on the site. Correct. Hey, will there be any wholesalers, wholesale trade happening on the site? Uh, I'm not sure what wholesale. I'm not sure what what uh, we have to. I'm not sure what wholesale trade is. To be honest with you, typically a wholesale, you know, a wholesaler is somebody that brings in a truckload of products and sells a pallet to to Costco. Sells a pallet to Walmart. Of Cer their product. Certainly, a, a contractor. Uh, the the ordinance doesn't define what a contractor is. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out for a resolution what you know, so that way the zoning officer can determine what it is and what it isn't. I understand. Uh, I mean, it's it's I. I mean, I'm in uncharted territory. I. I'm not, not from, that familiar with the wholesale business, to be completely honest with you. So would you be comfortable if we put in the resolution that there will be no wholesale trade and we'll leave it up to the zoning officer? To so we have to check. I have to check with the uh, client. I do know in speaking with them, I asked him, uh, you know, what type of clients are your customers are you going to be having here? Because, uh, again, as I agree with the chairman of the contract warehouse, you think of a guy. 2,000 square feet, one truck, two trucks, a couple of employees. Uh, he indicated he has some interest from contractors were a little bit larger, um, especially with what everyone went through the last few years, the larger contractors, roofing industry, um, the materials, uh, they want to be, these are large contracts that they have for, for large jobs throughout the state uh, and out, outside of the state. They've indicated they need the warehouse space to get all the inventory uh, for the materials, that they can do their jobs and continue. So if they take advantage of, of a, a good price, let's say, that's where they need a lot of the more warehousing. I understand your question regarding that, and I have to double double check that there's not a concern. But it is not a distribution center. If that's we, Thank I have no problem. If, if that's where you're going, we have the applicant yes. has no issue uh, with stating in I'm the record the that, that this mean, I, is. I can tell you, my personal business, I would be, you know, would be somebody who would utilize this space as, you know, so I, I can understand it, but right. I just want to make it clear for the zoning officer but, who will be. Sure. We, we, we have no objection, but I, I think. One place where I think some of the board members may go is it is this a distribution center? And that one we're saying no, and you could you could add that. Right. Uh, so there's no that. distribution center. Um, a final mile final mile delivery center. You know, final mile final mile delivery. I just don't know what that is. M meaning yes. where you know, you know Amazon delivers to my house. Um, you know, so all those products come in 
where I, and then we put them on individual delivery vans, trucks to go out oh, to the customers. That's a dis- to me, that's a distribution, distribution warehouse. Center, right. so thank <laughs> you. Uh, like a, th- a 3PL type center. Got us again. You can take out a 3PL. That sounds like three people. Uh, sorry, three 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 PL is a um, <laughs> it's, it, it's it's used a lot with Amazon and you know things like that where 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 it's a third party just a third party uh, repackaging slash just you know that that uh, sounds to me like distribution warehouses or distribution warehouse as well. Okay, so we can take that out. Um, you know, a uh, you know an importer exporter any any of that that could all that sounds like distribution warehouse to me as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I um, I thank you very much. <laughs> Question, Dr. Campbell. Uh, County Line Road, and and that massive front. What's that going to look like? Because we really didn't see any architecturals for the front of that building. The the front's going to look like if you go back to that A three. It's not going to have the doors, but it will have the same uh, textures. As but this. it will have some some um, architectural differences, elevations, uh, like that. You see, glass, yes, absolutely, yes. Glass, glass yes. no entrance, no doors, but something will break up that there, there, base. That's correct. There are doors, as Mr. Clean mentioned. I believe those are emergency access or egress doors. But right. the building, that building is set back uh, slightly over 60 feet. This, the front setback is 60 feet. So what Mr. Clee is asking for is, and, and I think it's a really good request, is to soften that with landscaping, hopefully even add a berm to, to oh, increase berm, that effectiveness. Because aesthetically right now, it looks like a big I understand. Problem. No, it's a valid point. And, and, and we, are, we will soften that again with, with, with the significant landscape plans and hopefully a berm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bressy. Yeah, I, I heard um, garage or engine working or something like that. And you don't know who your clients are going to be there yet. What about runoff from, like you said, oil changes and stuff? If you don't know where they're going to be, you're going to put that in every single building that they have the safety measures that that stuff can't run off into the system? What we normally do and what I would agree here is uh, we normally uh, put a provision in that no floor drains are permitted in the buildings. I think yes, that would be an appropriate. Any stipulate to that? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Herring? Yeah, question. The um, I think it might have been cleared up when I saw your picture here. Um, looking at building B, C, and D, um, where you bring the trucks in, that's just basic indentation, basically, where they will back in. It's not a covered area. That's correct. Where they can back in and close down or anything. That's correct. It's a depressed dock. As you see in A3 on the left side here, that's correct, not covered. And a question too on uh, building D and the very, D and the, the two in the bottom, um, there's, when the truck backs in, whatever's next to where it says HZ zone on our plan here, um, whatever tenants are there, what's gonna, you're gonna put something there so when the lights, as you said, normal operating hours, however, you said it could be there at any time, as far as that. So a truck, his truck is in there, he turns his lights on, and something's on the other side. Is there any way to protect the uh, whatever's next to it from the headlights shining out? You're talking about like the end of building D where it's facing building A? No, on very, on, on building D where it's facing away. Oh, facing this way. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, facing the HC zone to the uh, east. The other ones are facing basically not going to be in anybody's uh, face, basically. I understand. But those two there. Yeah, that's the adjoining highway commercial zone. That's the Clayton existing Clayton uh, Garden Center. Uh, we are proposing that's a ten foot area that we're required to landscape for the ordinance. We're pro- required to put trees every fifty feet with shrubs in between. Something to block the light. Yes, well, the shrubs would would block the light because the, the not trucks to back in. I agree, and and I think the shrubs would would be at a height uh, three, four, five feet that would block those uh, headlights. And I had one other question. Um, because building A looks like it's going to be a lot of small tenants in there. And That's not, correct. And, you know, relatively small trucks just dropping stuff off. So, um, but when we talk about manufacturing, there's a fine line between what manufacturing is and what it's not. Well, I'm not proposing any manufacturing. Yeah. So if you have a something like an electrician comes in, he's he builds his boxes and everything there, and takes them out to his client. So, I mean, theoretically, you could say building the boxes and everything is manufacturing. 
but it's like a, it's a slippery slope. Well, to me, manufacturing is making the boxes. Okay, so you, you know, have to, the, take you buying know. buying a box and buying the wire and and fabricating your final product for the job site to me is we had not client, manufacturing. We had an application here re, uh, early on with somebody bringing in and doing uh, iron work. I understand. In there, so something like that would not be what you consider a use for that building. I think that would be that would be a use for these they buildings. Yes, the and they actually make something. Well, it's, it, 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 it's, um, like I said, it's a, it's that's a contractor to me. That's not manufacturing. Manufacturing, would be, in my opinion, would be forging the steel to make the rod to then manufacture it. You know, that to me would be manufacturing. I guess it's an either holder. Not that that right. Manufacturing. Right. And maybe just to clear up some of the confusion, maybe you can ask the board attorney to maybe try to pitch a legal definition of the use. <laughs> Hey, would you agree that a, a contractor does not engage in retail sales? Yes, retail absolutely. Retail sales, directed care. Yeah, retail sales are permitted, of course, in the zone, but we are not proposing retail sales. Performs a service for someone? So yes. The purpose of this office, showroom, garage, warehouse, and shop building would be for a contractor to store materials and perhaps have people come and look at materials correct. that can then be installed in their home or office. That's correct. But correct. they're not taking, they're not carrying anything out. That's correct. And they're not delivering from That's there. correct. So none of the uses that are going to be in these buildings would engage in that kind of. We're not, we're not proposing retail. So are, do you have, have you done other projects like these in other places? We've done in Jackson. We have a couple approved directly across the, the highway from this site. Uh, what, they have not been constructed yet. But what kind of contractors are there? Electricians. Besides the roofing. Well, I think it's it's plumbing. HVAC, uh, electrical, plumbing, uh, framing contractor, building contractor, site contractor. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I just there's a long list. <laughs> But you do believe that that fabricating ironwork would be a contractor? Uh, yes, I do. Because he's welding and, and creating something, I'm sorry, creating something in this, not necessarily a showroom, but actually using it for creation of something that's not manufacturing. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, we need to be careful of the words assembly and fabrication. Is they're specifically used in the manufacturing and industrial zone. That's correct. Okay. So I, I don't want to parse words, and I apologize for interrupting, but I don't want to leave confusion for the zoning officer. And if necessary, perhaps if the board acted in the affirmative this evening, prior to the draft of the resolution, perhaps three parties could get involved, the applicant, the board's professionals, and the zoning officer, to say what it is and what it isn't. And then if they can't agree, they can come back here. It's a good idea. The zoning, I'm, I'm, the zoning officer is probably making a determination. I, so maybe yeah, we, I'm certainly not proposing assembly or fabrication. I was really kind of started with Mr. Herring's question about the electrician. Uh, maybe got a field with the welding thing. Maybe I went too far afield on that. But certainly from a contractor perspective, you know, it's common to to uh, work with their components as they bring them from the uh, out to the field. Fleming? There. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Now, I, I believe that um, this application, this property, I apologize, um, was by the zoning board at some earlier point, and I believe it was maybe in October, November, there was testimony given by the zoning board that a site this size wouldn't be economically feasible for a contractor warehouse showroom garage. This one, I, I did not present that case, so I didn't, I'm not aware of what they argued. Okay, I just want to ensure that, uh, you know, this... Now, obviously, your client feels that it will be. Yeah, so, so I was the attorney on that application. That's it's a, not exactly what the testimony was. The testimony was that, as far as historically the site, 
and anybody who's been around Jackson a long time knows that a lot of different things were proposed, not always with the applications actually got to the board. Sometimes they stopped even before because uh, of objectives, but they looked at this for retail. It's been, it's been looked at for many different uses. Um, the previous owner sought to put on a distribution center, um, which is very different. And again, there was a lengthy, uh, and actually I like Mr. Peter's uh, recommendation that we have input from um, Mr. Paporo, the zoning officer. And I will tell you that the the conversation at the zoning board had to do with the township, number one, not having a definition for uh, the, for a contractor warehouse versus regular warehouse. Uh, and there was a, there was a lengthy conversation um, on it. Uh, that, uh, that applicant had a totally different use and we did have a financial um, uh, report and analysis based upon the site, which incorporated really all the other uses, the retail, we, we didn't discuss uh, specifically a contractor warehouse. It talked about many other uses. Uh, well, that application was a, like I said, was a use variance application, totally different, uh, different owner. Um, and this application and this applicant is seeking contractor warehouse. Thank you. No, as long as, you know, I, I, would, I would be comfortable with really putting in, you know, put, you know, give, giving the zoning officer that leverage, mm -hmm. whether it comes to any specific tenant, you know, to be able to make that final determination whether it complies with the with the zone. That's all. Even even if we don't give him that leverage, he, he's a zoning officer, and he that's the right he that he it. he has it no matter what. <laughs> Thank you. So, unless the board has any other questions for for Mr. Borden, sure, Mr. Presser. Uh, Mr. Borden, you said you uh, answered the environmental uh, commission. I replied to them by letter last week. Did you get a uh, no, I just sent it to him last you week. Stipulate that you. Get a letter. Yeah, if you don't get a letter of no concern, it has to be back in. Front. Of course, as as all outside agency approvals. Yes. You know, just um, sorry before you, before you step away. Um, I don't believe we got on the record yet. The stormwater management is, you know, is all well. We we concern. have a uh, we have a series of uh, three different uh, above ground small scale uh, de detention basins, as well as roof recharge for the individual. Uh, uh, buildings, uh, obviously, as you heard many times, green infrastructure is required to be complied with. You have to decentralize the stormwater system. Uh, this project does that, uh, complies with the state stormwater regulations by decentralizing the station, the system, providing green infrastructure, providing uh, gr a groundwater recharge for the two-year storm, uh, uh, water quality for the one-year storm, and flood control of the 21000. So as Mr. Clee had testified they had no questions on the stormwater system okay thank you and it'll be owned and maintained by the property owner all will be thank you doug that all will be maintained by the property owner as will be the entire site um uh, and and the stormwater system thank you very much if there are no other questions for mr borden i'll call it mr ray to address traffic mr chairman just, oh, i'm sorry, sorry. just sorry if we just we go back to the building a and the uh north county line road um elevation uh, we have the streeties. I think we, if we can get some berming, we have some shrubs kind of soften the impact. But can we do something with the building itself? Yes. I'm thinking like these windows. Yes. We, we, I think Ms. Dr. Campbell had asked for that and we said yes. yes. Okay. Um, fine. Thank you. Dr. Campbell, was the word you were looking for fenestrations? The fenestrations. Well, now, now, see, now you're above my pay grade. <laughs> 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 Mr. Ray. If we can, sir, Mr. Ray. Mr. Ray, you've already been sworn in. For the other application, not for this one. So we'll do it. I will swear affirm that the testimony you're about to give for this application before the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. That your name and address for the record. John Ray, R E A, a principal with McDonough and Ray Associates, traffic engineering, a professional engineer, and I've testified before this board before as recently as about an hour ago. Thank mm -hmm. you. And you still accept them as an expert in this field? We still accept it. Thank you. Thank you. 
John, you had an opportunity to both hear the comments and to prepare a report. If you can just walk us through the application from the traffic uh, standpoint. Sure. We, we did prepare a traffic impact analysis for the project. It's dated June 29th, 2022. And uh, I believe it's a fully detailed uh, traffic impact analysis that looks at uh, a design year of 2032, 10 years into the future, uh, in accordance with the Ocean County Planning Board protocol. And Anthony, if you could go back to the aerial photograph, which I guess is A1. So as you can see where the site is on the north side of County Line Road, it's perfectly situated with respect to um, access to County Line Road. We have traffic signals to the west, to the east, excuse me, there is a pair of reversing jug handles and a two-phase traffic signal right at this location. And to the west, there's the signal at Jackson Mills Road and County Line Road. So that's where U-turns will be made. County Line Road is a four-lane divided highway in this area, two lanes in each direction with shoulders on both sides of the road. Of course, again, it's under Ocean County uh, jurisdiction. Uh, based on the size of the project and the nature of the what we believe the tenants will be, we're projecting approximately 170 driveway movements during the morning and afternoon peak hours. That would be a combination of entering and exiting traffic. They'll be spread out across the two driveway locations that we're proposing. Um, all the movements onto and off the property will be right turn in, right turn out. With respect to the traffic study, we have done traffic counts because we've been working on this site for quite a few years as Adam and, and Ian have testified to. A lot of people have looked at this property. There were different development proposals. We were involved in some of them. So as a result, we've done traffic counts at the two signalized intersections on either side of this property in June of 2019, we did the counts again in February of 2020 and again in 2022. So we have three different sets of traffic counts we've done at both of those intersections. And I can tell you that in preparing the traffic impact study, we use the highest traffic counts from any of those traffic counts that we've conducted. Uh, to give you an example, the June 2019 traffic counts, which were pre-COVID traffic counts, were basically the highest traffic counts at the two signalized intersections. Uh, they're starting to come back a little bit. The 2020 traffic counts were about 20% lower. The 2022 counts were starting to get back approaching the 2019 counts, but they still didn't quite reach the pre-COVID levels. So we did use the highest traffic counts that we recorded over the last three or four years that we've done counts out here as a basis for the traffic study. Uh, as the board knows, we, we calculate uh, how well an intersection operates by using a, a term called level of service uh, for signalized intersections and unsignalized intersections. And I can tell you that for the 2032 design year for the reversing jug handles to the east of our property, uh, there's very little traffic using those drug handles. That signal is a basic two-phase operation. It's going to operate at level of service A, which is almost unheard of for central New Jersey uh, during the uh, AM and PM peak hours for the 2032 design year. At the intersection of Jackson Mills Road, we have a multi-phase traffic signal. There is a left turn lane on southbound Jackson Mills Road for movements turning left onto eastbound County Line Road. There's a left turn lane and a left turn arrow for that movement. Uh, the County Line Road and the, the opposite side of uh, Jackson Mills Road have what we call a split phase operation with each leg of the intersection get its, getting its own separate phase. So there's a multi-phase signal there that operates on a 100 second cycle. That's been analyzed as well. And that intersection will operate at level of service C for the morning and afternoon peak hours for the 2032 design year. The two driveways on County Line Road, which will be right in, right out driveways, are going to operate at level of service B because the only movements out of those driveways are going to be right turn exit movements. They'll take advantage of the gaps created by the signal just to the east of us, the reversing jug handles, which will allow our traffic to, to get out and make those right turns very easily. The site distance is very good. County Line Road is level and straight in the area. With respect to the site plan itself and the parking, 
as Mr. Peters has indicated, uh, that there are the, the overall parking for the entire site meets the township ordinance requirements, but some of the parking is a little, little bit removed from some of the buildings, uh, but we do meet the parking requirement. And I can tell the board that it's been my experience having done some of these projects in the past that have been built. Uh, one in particular was just built and it's fully occupied on Okerson Road on the Howell Freehold border, a little bit smaller than this project. The building isn't quite as big. I think it was two buildings but it was basically contractors that are in there. I know Safe Light Auto Glass just went into one of the uh, one of the buildings, and we we've been back to do parking counts, and they're generating parking. These tenants are generating parking at approximately half of what the township ordinance required. My expectation is something similar is going to happen here. I don't think we're going to need all of that parking. We'd like to put it in for marketing purposes to make sure that any prospective tenants know that we're gonna have adequate parking. But my expectation is that uh, we, we will have more than adequate parking and the parking spaces that are proximate to the buildings themselves will be of course the first ones used. And I don't think there's gonna be a situation where anybody has to park their car and walk a couple of hundred feet to get to a door uh, for the building in which they work. So I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, the other thing that you know I do like about this project, which really makes me believe that these are going to be contractor flex type buildings, is when you look at the site plan, you can see that there are very limited numbers of uh, tractor trailer loading spaces. So these aren't going to be warehouses, they're not going to be distribution facilities. And as Ian indicated during his testimony earlier, the buildings are pretty narrow. They're long, but they're narrow. They're really not set up for warehouse or distribution use. And we don't have a lot of, uh, you know, a whole line of trailer truck loading docks on, on the sides of the building, which leads me to believe that uh, the testimony that you've heard and, and what the use is intended to be is accurate. It's going to be for maybe large contractors, not necessarily small contractors, but that is the expected uh, tenant base that will be moving into the buildings. So the offsite traffic will work appropriately and safely. Again, we will have to make an impact fee to the Ocean County Planning Board for our offsite traffic impacts. That fee has to be paid. And I don't know what the status of the county uh, approval is. Did we get a conditional approval? Not yet, okay. But we they're aware of the project. And um, of course, they're gonna make their review. They're gonna review the traffic study, assess us a traffic impact fee, and my expectation is we will get their approval. John, with regard to I think, uh, uh, Ernie's question regarding uh, green banking, some of the parking, uh, do you think there's any issue with that? I think we can green bank some of the parking. Uh, we'd have to run that by our client. I think we can do that. And um, that, again, goes back to my testimony that I don't think we're going to need 500 and some odd parking spaces. And I think we can accomplish that. Thank you. Any questions from professionals or board members? I do like the idea of green banking the parking as it is in the highway commercial zone. You could probably use it as retail at some point, at least, you know, there may be, and you can always, you know, because the parking calculations are different, you can always uh, build out parking as necessary. And, and, and I know the storm, stormwater system has been designed to, to take into account that all of the parking spaces will be constructed. So if we green bank them, it'll just lessen the drainage impacts. And it, it, it'll all be good, I think, if we can do that. Mr. Chairman? Yes. If I might. Mr. Ray, along the property's frontage, you said that there's a full shoulder existing? That is what I believe. I uh, wasn't out there today, but from my site visits, that's what I believe so is out there. The purpose for my question is is fairly straightforward. Do we expect the county's going to ask you to do widen? Yes. Okay. So will there be a need for either decel lanes getting into the site or axel lanes getting out of the site that would be considered off track? Well, they'd be along our property frontage, so I'm not certain any any improvements along our frontage along the county right of way would be 
wouldn't necessarily be off track. No, I'm saying as, okay. as you're traveling west on county line and you get to the first entrance, if there's a need for a decel lane, it's going to occur before you get to the property line. Correct. And then if you're leaving the site from the westerly end and you make a right-hand turn, there might be the need for an axel lane, which would extend past your property line. Right. So I don't know if those are off track in your clients. They, that sure. would be off track improvements. And the thing I can I can say, Ernie, is it, it has been my experience that the county usually doesn't require acceleration lanes from projects like this because you really don't want traffic to pull out and accelerate up the highway speed. You want them to wait for a gap. Deceleration lanes are much more um useful in a case like this because you get the traffic off the highway into a decel lane to get into you know it's it's a safety issue but acceleration lanes are really not warranted on a land service highway you want traffic to find a gap before they pull out onto county line road rather than accelerating up the highway speed Thank so you. whatever the county requires we'll do at jackson mills road um if you know i would assume but i i, I don't know would you perceive that those existing improvements are satisfactory for the largest design vehicle that would come from this site? I believe they are. And the county will be looking at that uh, because there is the potential issue of the southbound left turn lane on Jackson Mills Road turning left onto eastbound county line. If, if there were a lot of trucks in that left turn lane during peak hours, it might need to be lengthened. The county is going to take a look at that. Right now, it appears as though that's not necessary. Same question down at the reverse jug handle. Um, that's been there since long they, time since they built, since they widened the highway. Right. Um, you know, a hundred people have used it. Exactly. But my question to you is: Is is it of sufficient geometry and size to handle your largest vehicle? The geometry is sufficient. Yes, with respect to the stacking, again, it's going to the county's going to take a look at the numbers and let us know if we need to do anything there. Thank you for those clarifications. I don't have anything else for Mr. Ray. Anybody else? No. On that, uh, Mr. Ray. Yeah. Mr. Ray, on the yeah. Jackson Mills coming down the county line road. I mean, you say the county's going to take a look at it because during peak hours there is a steady. Flow of tractor trailers coming off 195 coming down here to shop right and stuff all the time now. So it has to be looked at. Yes, it will be. Thank you. Mr. Herring? Yeah, I just had one question. Um, it might not be related to parking or, or traffic, um, but a statement of, of, of operation says that you can um, tenants make park their, their vehicles overnight. But does that include bulldozers, uh, trucks, uh, backhoes, and things like that? The answer is no. No provision on the uh, where they could actually do that kind of thing. Yeah, not that kind of equipment, just just vehicles, you know. Like a pickup, registered vehicles. Pickup yeah. truck or something like that. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. All right, thank you. And you're limiting the use of those type of vehicles parked outside? They just can't be stored overnight. They're not. Okay. Correct. Anybody else? Okay. If any other witnesses or Oh, nope. Sorry, Dr. Campbell has one question. I, I have one question for Mr. Borden. Uh, signage will only, the, the signage on the buildings will only be in the rear, not fronting County Line Road, not on the front of the County Line Road. Will the signage will be on the interior project yes, side. It won't be on the exterior. The buildings. Maybe a number. Uh, That's correct. That be okay, but no commercial. Yes. That's correct. Thank you. That is our testimony. Yeah, I'd like to open it up to the public. Um, if anyone from the public would like to speak on this application, please come forward. Hi. Do you uh, so, can you raise your right hand? Sure. Thank you. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give before this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And can you please state your name and address for the record? My name is Edward Einhorn. I live at 1487 Cedar Row, Lakewood, New Jersey. Thank you. Thank you. My wife owns the property uh, to the west which is 600 North 
County Line Road. The property that is proposed rises five to six feet on the easterly line above the existing grade. This property that used to drain east to west is now artificially blocked to the C1 stream and is now diverted to County Line Road, unfiltered, goes to the E inlet on County Line Road, and then it goes to the stream, the road to stream, so my wife's property. But no cubic feet calculations of water going to the single E inlet that I have seen. And without these calculations or filtration, you may experience a surge charge in the stream and will flood my property. Uh, in addition, uh, I believe the vice chairman had mentioned aesthetics. Um, you have a buildings, a building that is a lot higher than the other properties in the area. And I'd like to know, is the ordinance measurement of height of building not to exceed 35 feet? Is that from proposed grade or from existing grade? Proposed. Thank you. That's what I have. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing no one come forward, I want to make a motion to close public session. All in favor? Thank you. Closing comments. Just in summation, uh, the applicant did put the time together to put in a very nice, rateable conforming variance free application. Um, again, the board had some good input with regard to the added landscaping, um, the green baking of the of some parking, <clears throat> uh, fenestrations um, along uh, County Line Road. Um, and with that, I think this is a nice clean application uh, for a property that has been, uh, my entire lifetime has been vacant um, and, and barren. Uh, I think this will be a very nice project uh, for the county line corridor. And I would just ask that the board vote uh, in favor of the application. Thank you. I think they asked the board before if they would like, um, if the board would like to see sidewalks along county line road. Does anyone have any opinion on that before we close it? There's no sidewalks on either side so far. You know, I love sidewalks, but I like sidewalks in residential areas. I, I really don't think anybody's going to be walking back and forth on the frontage of that property. So I don't particularly see a need. And then we get that money into the uh, fund. Yeah, we can put the sidewalks where they're needed and not encourage people walking along County Road. Oh, we are fine with that. And again, yeah, we will one pay into the fund. Sure. The question the gentleman asked about the water flow. Do uh, you agree with that? Is there a problem with the water flow going into that, that system or not? As, as I understand it, he didn't have a block number, but I, I, I think he's talking about this property here. But our, our flow was uh, to the west of the stream. And we again are controlling the rates of runoff. So we we have basically almost zero discharge for a hundred year storm, for example. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone like to deliberate on the application? Yeah. Sure. Please. Thank you. If you look at the hundred year storm. Okay. I'm sorry, can you just state your name and address? Okay. Thank you. If you look at the plan, and if you look at, I believe it's the tension basin, and if you look at the triangle at the end, there's no calculation of that. So you do not know what the water going above the detention basin, what that number is, since it was left out. I believe it's page 10. 
So you don't have complete information. I'm not sure if you're referring to the site plans or the stormwater calculations, but the there, there has been nothing left out. We did a comprehensive pre and post development analysis and uh, uh, sure. Thank you. Invert number. Oh, he's referring to an invert of a, of, a, of an outfall pipe. Uh, that's not a that's not a question of flow. That's just a question of an elevation of a structure. We'll provide that information, but but the testimony and the the stormwater report uh, prepared as part of the application are complete and comprehensive, and have uh, meet all the conditions of the state stormwater requirements. Mr. Quay, anything to add to that? I would agree with Mr. Borden. Um, we did provide some um, uh, technical revisions, the T's and I's that he has to cross. But, you know, for the most part, he's good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would like to deliberate at all? I make a, uh, a proposal that we uh, accept as uh, all the resolution notes will affirm uh, we accept this project. Do we have a second? Thank you, roll call please. Mr. Brassi. Although yes, based on all the stipulations and movement that the applicant made, I think it was a good application and I vote yes. Mr. Bersin? Yes. Mr. Fleming? Yes. Mr. Herring? Yes. Mr. Haller? Yes. Mr. Wall? Yes. Dr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Herman? Yes. Now, just before we close, I just want to thank all four of our applicants tonight. I believe we heard four applications, two of them quite large, and we did not grant one variance tonight. They were all fully conforming, so thank you for coming and buttoned up. I think we get a motion to close. Motion to close. Yeah. All in favor? Uh, Thank you very much. Yes. Very nice. Very nice.